Complex. My name is Wayne Thompson. Welcome to the QMJHL OHL All-Star Challenge. We've been waiting for this for quite some time now with berated breath and uh, being down here the last two days watching the club's practice. We are going to see some exciting hockey this evening. There's no doubt about that. Eric Lindros, of course, the Oshawa General's uh, centerman, six foot four, 220 pounds, will be involved in this hockey game, and we look forward to an exciting contest from him. Over 100 scouts are in the building this evening to catch this contest for what could very well be a lot of NHL superstars in the future. Also for uh, Quebec on their side, Stefan Fissette, who of course Sean for the World Junior Hockey Club over in Helsinki, Finland. He will start in goal this evening for the Quebec side. Jack Miller from Brockville, from Belleville rather, Jack Miller and Fred Pletch from the Cornwall Royals Hockey Club bringing you the play-by-play this evening, let's shoot upstairs right now to Fred Pletch and Jack Miller. Well, thank you very much, Wayne, and good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to Cornwall Roger Cable 11's coverage of the 5th Annual OHL Quebec Major Junior Hockey League All-Star Game. Jack, I have not seen this much excitement surrounding one of these games yet uh, I know this series is is still early but the OHL has placed a lot of emphasis on winning this game well, well, let's on. face facts for it they certainly haven't won too many of them over the years this is the fifth challenge four of them in the past three of those have gone to Quebec and now it's become almost a mission it seems on behalf of the OHL from their commissioner David Branch to come out and do something about it this is not your typical all-star game it's not East versus West Ames versus Layton or anything like that it's a simple case it's our our league against their league. Take whichever side you wish. And it's been their league winning. If uh, you go back over the game, seven of them in all, and uh, or six of those in all, and five of them have been won by Quebec. And in the early goings, it used to be two games, uh, one in Hull and one in Ottawa. Then they decided after a second year to go down to a single game format, which is why you have the odd number of games compared to the number of challenges. But this is big. And uh, you can tell just by fact that the OHL decided they were going to change the format on selecting players and went to a committee, if you will. It was Dick Todd and Dave Draper, along with uh, Sam McMaster and Sudbury. That tells you they mean business. No question about that. They are introducing the players in tonight's OHL, QMJHL All-Star Challenge. And let's now rejoin the folks at ice level and pick up the introduction of the players from Cornwall Civic Complex PA announcer, Yvonne Alamir. Number 30, le numéro 30, Herbert Hohenberger Hall. Number 30, le numéro, le, number 39, le numéro 39, Daniel Doré Chicoutimi. Number 44, le numéro 44, Paul Willett Longueuil. And number 20, 77, le numéro 77, Reginal Savage de Victoriaville. The head coach, l'instructeur en chef Guy Chouinard, Victoriaville. The assistant coach, L'assistant instructeur Yves Lambert de Victoriaville. The training staff, les soigneurs François Brûlé de Laval, Pierre Fortier de Laval, Pierre Lérivé de Victoriaville et Luc Perrault de Victoriaville. Ladies and gentlemen, the Quebec Major Junior All-Star Team. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Ontario Hockey League Major All-Stars. Number 30, le numéro 30, Todd Boysoon, Peterborough. Number 31, le numéro 31, Jeff Fife, Belleville. Number 2, le numéro 2, Adam Bennett, Sudbury. Number 4, le numéro 4, Joni Leto, Ottawa. Number 6, le numéro 6, Chris Snell, Ottawa. Number 7, le numéro 7, Mike Bodnerchuk, Kingston. Number eight, le numéro huit, Rob Pearson, Belleville. Number nine, le numéro neuf, Mike Ricci, Peterborough. Number ten, le numéro dix, Brad May, Niagara Falls. Number eleven, le numéro onze, Owen Nolan, Cornwall. Number twelve, le numéro douze, Stephen Rice, Kitchener. Number 14, le numéro 14, Jason Cerrone. On the, on the injured list, sur la liste des blessures, number 15, le numéro 15, Mike Craig, Oshawa. 
Number 20, le numéro 20, Bob Berg, Belleville. Number 21, le numéro 21, Jason York, Kitchener. Number 22, le numéro 22, Paul DiPietro, Sudbury. Number 23, le numéro 23, Randy Pierce, Kitchener. Number 27, le numéro 27, John Slaney, Cornwall. Number 29, le numéro 29, Paul Holden, London. Number 55, le numéro 55, Keith Primo, Niagara Falls. Number 88, le numéro 88, Eric Lindros, Oshawa. Also on the injured list, we're in number 20, 55, Drake Berhowski of Kingston. The head coach, l'instructeur en chef, Dick Todd of Peterborough. Assistant coach, l'assistant instructeur, Mark Crawford, Cornwall. The training staff, les soigneurs, Don Brantley, London. Dave Kahn, Cornwall, Mario Boisvert, Cornwall, and Barclay Branch, Stick Boy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the OHL All-Star Team. <laughs> to officially start this OHL and Quebec Major Junior Hockey League All-Star Challenge, please welcome Mr. Cal Contin of Chrysler Canada, and Mike McDougall of Cornwall, the representative for Molson Breweries, will officially open the OHL Quebec Major Junior Hockey All-Star Challenge. Yep, right on. I've got it, I've got it in French also. Pour en faire l'ouverture officielle, mesdames, mesdemoiselles et messieurs, nous avons Monsieur Carl Quentin de Chrysler Canada et Monsieur Mike McDougall de Cornwall, le représentant la, la brasserie Molson de l'Ontario. Joining Mr. Contin and Mr. McDougal, Mr. McDougal rather, at center ice uh, will be Mr. Barry Brownlee, president of the Cornwall Royals. Mesdames et messieurs, pour accompagner Mr. Contin et Mike McDougal, nous avons Mr. Barry Brownlee, le président des Royals de Cornwall, followed by Mr. Brian O'Neill, executive vice president of the National Hockey League. Mr. Brian O'Neill. Le vice-président exécutif de la Ligue nationale de hockey. The honorary captain of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, known in Cornwall, Pierre Duguay. The honorary captain of the Ontario Hockey League team, Bob Kilger. At this time, we would like to ask both... Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot here a gentleman. Oh, by all means, my God, the president of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, Mr. Gilles Courteau. Mesdames et messieurs, le président de la Ligue Junior Major du Québec, Gilles Courteau. How could I forget the most two important gentlemen? Also is Mr. Dave Branch, the commissioner of the OHL. Mesdames et messieurs, Monsieur David Branch, commissaire de la Ligue Junior de l'Ontario. At this time, we'd like to have the captains of each team to please come to center rice, representing the Ontario Hockey League All-Star team, Captain Mike Ritchie. And representing the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League All-Star Team, Captain Daniel Doré. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials for this evening's 
match, les officiels pour le match de ce soir, the referee, l'arbitre Dave Lynch. The, the linesmen, les juges de ligne, Steve Corleone and Frank Glebe. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ontario Hockey League and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League would like to honor a special group of athletes, coaches, and administrators. Mesdames et messieurs, la Ligue de hockey de l'Ontario et de la Ligue de hockey junior majeur du Québec voudraient en ce moment honorer un groupe d'athlètes spéciaux, également des instructeurs et administrateurs. Please welcome members of Canada's national junior team who captured the gold medal at the 1990 World Junior Hockey Championships held in Helsinki, Finland this past December and January. Mesdames et messieurs, souhaitons la bienvenue aux membres de l'équipe junior nationale du Canada qui ont apporté la médaille d'or au championnat mondial de hockey junior qui fut disputé à Helsinki en Finlande au mois de décembre et janvier dernier. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach L'instructeur en chef, M. Guy Charon. The assistant coach, l'assistant instructeur, Dick Todd. Mr. Pat Reed, director of operations. Monsieur Pat Reed, directeur des opérations. Mike Murray, Monsieur Mike Murray, directeur des relations publiques, director of public relations. Dr. Rudy Gittens, team's, the team physician, le Dr. Rudy Gittens, le physicien de l'équipe. Jimmy Jackson, the trainer, and Mr. Frank Bonello, special advisor from the National Hockey League. Monsieur Jimmy Jackson, le soigneur, et également Monsieur Frank Bonello de la Ligue Nationale de Hockey. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the players. Mesdames et messieurs, voici maintenant les joueurs from le titan de Victoriaville, Stéphane Fissette. From Laval, de Laval, Patrice Brisebois. From the Oshawa Generals, Mike Craig. Also from the Oshawa Generals, également de General de, de Oshawa, Eric Lindros. From the Kitchener Rangers, the Rangers, the Kitchener, Stephen Rice. And from the Peterborough Peets, the Peets de Peterborough, National Junior Team Captain, Mike Ricci. Ladies and gentlemen, your world champions. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you please remain standing and join Cécile Lalonde in the singing of our national anthem. Mesdames et messieurs, debout maintenant, s'il vous plaît, et joignez-nous ensemble avec Cécile Lalonde pour le chant de notre hymne national. Got 
t'embrasse et porte l'épée, il sait porter la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. Opening face-off and first period play-by-play -play action. You're watching the fifth annual OHL Quebec Major Junior Hockey League All-Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall. We remind you that the swimming lessons for toddlers, children, teenagers, adults, and seniors are available at the Kinsman Municipal Centre. Also being offered at the Kinsman Municipal Centre is a variety of recreational swims, plus synchronized swimming and competitive swimming. For more information, please call 933-3586. The starting goaltenders for tonight's game. Guarding the net to our left, number 29. From the Victoriaville Tigers of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, Stefan Fazette. Jack, we all know what he's capable of. The question, I guess, surrounds the guy at the other end of the ice, wearing number 31 from the Ontario Hockey League. A young man you're very familiar with who leads the OHL with the best goals against average, Jeff Fife. Let me tell you a good story about Jeff Fife, and that's basically that when you work hard and don't give up, you're going to get success, and that's exactly what's happened here. As his 17-year-old Fife came to the Belleville Bulls training camp and uh, actually made the team, was not playing early on, and decided that he wanted more time in Junior B. Came back the next year, won a spot, played well as an 18-year-old through the first half of season, struggled in the second half. Last year under Danny Flynn, again, a very tough first half to the season. Flynn darn near trade him, traded him uh, to the London Knights. It came right down to the trading deadline, we're told, and uh, Jeffrey was more than aware of that. But he buckled down, he worked hard, and through the uh, help of assistant coach Sean McKenzie, has really done a job since about last February on. He was the key to Belleville having a fairly decent finish, and this year he has been outstanding in 40 games played at 3.17 goals against average 25 10 and 2 and he's not doing it with mirrors he knows how to mentally prepare himself for a game and he has also learned that a veteran goaltender lets the puck come to him not going after a puck and that has been the biggest difference in his play so far this season the referee for tonight's game OHL veteran Dave Lynch he's from Pickering Ontario and Dave Lynch will be assisted on the lines by Ottawa Valley's Steve Corleone and Frank Gleave, who hails from the Nickel City, Sudbury, Ontario. So Jeff Fife between the pipes for the OHL. Quebec with Stefan Fazette in goal. And Dick Todd sends out three Royals to start this game. Three members of the host Cornwall Royals. Nolan on the right side. Ricci at center. Cerrone on the left wing. Slaney and Adam Bennett. Andrew McKim taking the face off for Quebec and Andrew McKim in the summer anyway wanted to be a Belleville Bull. Yeah Belleville would have gladly taken him. I don't think we'd kick anybody out who wanted to be a 50 goal scorer in the OHL and he certainly put up more numbers than even that at this point. Just underway Nolan drops for Ricci. Ricci trying to find room kicks behind the net for Nolan. He's poke checked by Bart. Buck loose in the corner. Ricci will try to feed. Now it comes back to Slaney. He steps up. Slaney, one fancy move. Scramble in front. They back at it. It is still loose. 
OHL scored 44 seconds into last year's All-Star game with the Montreal form. Here's Nolan loose again behind the net. Ricci centers for Cerrone. Comes back to Slaney. Walks in backhand, forehand, tries to stuff it. They scramble away. The light flickered on, but no way. That puck never crossed the goal line. Well, the light is the still on right on. now. Dave Lynch is right there. What pressure by this line of Nolan, Ricci, and Cerrone. Well, that's not surprising. Of course, Nolan and Cerrone know each other so well as we take another look at it on the replay. You be the judge whether it's in or not, but Quebec could not clear the puck. Slaney walks right in here, gets the shot away. Cerrone on his backhand. See if we get the goal line on this as it comes back out around. Perfect view. It'll come back to Slaney again eventually. Now watch for it. Right in there. Where's the puck? <laughs> Looks like it's behind him, but it might not be. But obviously Dave Lynch right there, and he says, no, it's not in. Alendraz up with Pearson and Burke for the OHL right now. Here's Burke from the far side boards. He's being watched by Willett. Berg dumps it in back of the net. Lindros is there with Rob Pearson, a first rounder of the Maple Leafs. Dumped in boards again for Lindros. Lindros, he gives it to Berg. Berg trying to find some room. His quarters are very, very tight and along the boards in that Quebec junior zone. Finally, fight around the boards for Daniel Dore, and he got stood up. Two but line Quebec's across the, the blue line, and it's a two-line pass. Daniel Dore really got hammered by number six, Chris Snell. As Snell's not a very big guy, but he knows how to hip check. He knows how to use the shoulder very, very effectively. The Quebec League is an older team than Ontario. They come into this one surprisingly with four overage players in their lineup, and 13 of their 20 players are 19 years of age or over. Meanwhile, for Ontario, exactly half the roster, 10 of their 20 players are 19 years of age or over, and the only overage is Jeff Fife, and he's in net. There's a drive by Jason York. The rebound it was swept away by Brisbois before Pierce could get to it. We're 90 seconds into this game, and the puck has been across the Ontario side of center ice just once. Bodner Chuck will dump it in again. Fizette sweeps it around the boards himself. DePietro jumps right on it. Savage back deep helping the defenseman Brisbois and Reggie Savage, a Washington Capitals first round draft pick. With have help, and they finally clear it down the ice. Fife wandering out of the net. They'll leave it for Paul Holden of the London Knights. Up on the left side, Randy Pierce from Kitchener. He's checked. Holden came in high on Sevenier, and it's dumped across the Ontario line again. Banged the other way by Bodner Chuck. Turning with it now is Bart. LaRouche now, head manning for Savage. Savage will just jump it in, and Quebec will make changes. And Brad May introduced himself to Reggie Savage right there. Back to the you. OHL, they dump it in. The glove down by Bart. Bart takes sanctuary, back the net. Stick handles right through the goal crease. Now LaRue, lead pass, and he's got St. Amour. His weak shot didn't get on net. Rolled around the board to the near side now for Brad May. He's trying to find his teammate from Niagara Falls. You can't Pete miss Primo, him. who was effectively covered and knocked down by Bart. OHL dumps it in again. La point behind it. Ooh, big, big hit. And Stephen Rice went in there and creamed a Quebec defenseman. There's a little bit of an alley-oop pass across the blue line for Patrick LeBeau. Make it 22 LaRouche. He got knocked down. Very tight checking. Here's Rice breaking loose on the right side. Rice tees it up, fakes. Looks out front for Primo, though, shot, and somebody knocked into the net. It was Brad May, and it came off its mooring. You're seeing why this is not a typical All-Star game. What you're seeing is hard hits right off the bat, as you say, Brad May introducing himself to Quebec, and he didn't do it with a, your normal invitational card that uh, comes with an RSVP. Bottom line is this. These teams want to win. This Ontario team was put together with exactly that in mind. They're trying to figure out what best kind of player they would need to effectively uh, check Quebec. And they've been beaten in the goal scoring in the last couple of years. And a guy like Randy Pierce is Snell a perfect Snell with a example. drive from the point. Another scramble out in front. And back comes Quebec. Three on two. Nolan trying to help out. LeBeau jams on the brakes. Hohenberger walks in. And I think Alato blocked that. Buck bounces. And it bounced straight over somebody. And out of play. No score yet. Three minutes, 24 seconds into the opening period. 
You take a look at a guy like Randy Pierce uh, from the Kitchener Rangers on this team. Look at how many of his teammates probably deserve to be here just by virtue of their scoring statistics. The points, yeah. But they are not. And uh, because Pierce is a specific kind of player that they feel would be best utilized to counter what Quebec can throw at them. McKim, first player in the Quebec League to score 50 goals this season, takes the draw, wins it. Lebeau drops to the point. There's a shot taken by Francois Grelo. And that is up and out of play. Grillo, just 16 years of age as they come together. Who's that? Jason Cerrone. And tangled up with number 23, Stefan LeBeau. Grillo, one of two minor midgets on the team. And uh, certainly, when you take a look at uh, the way the scouts are talking about him already, it's almost uh, the Quebec version of a Lindros, perhaps not to that extent. But uh, nine goals, 38 assists uh, as a minor midget playing in the Quebec League, native of Longueuil, Quebec. Martin Lapointe, also a 16-year-old in this game. He won't be 17 until September. Here's Ricci. Can't do much with it. McKim tried to feed Alston. And Leto has to chase back deep for it. Yoni Leto ties up his man. McKim comes in late. Cerrone has him covered. And Ricci escapes with a puck. There's a pinch by Grollo. Kept it in. Comes right back to Ricci. Mike Ricci has a stick under his arm. Cerrone with a drive from the angle. And that went off the glove of Fizet. Snell moving up from the point. Cerrone dishes off. Ricci out front for Nolan. Oh, and that went off his skate as Fizet slid across the goal mouth to cover. Alley oop pass on the right side for Alston. Alston crisscrosses with McKim. LeBeau with a shot. And Jeff Fike over to cover the angle and make the save. Back comes York feeding down the right side. It will be dumped in by Rob Pearson. Bart clears it the other way to the line, but not out. And Claude Bart is going to lug it now. Down across the Ontario blue line, just shovels it in. Daniel Doré, right after Paul Holden. Doré started the season with the Quebec Nordiques of the NHL, their first rounder in 88. They muck for the puck along the boards to the end boards. Flipped up the right side. Rob Pearson is there. Doré over to check. Lindros comes back to the point. There is a drive whistled wide by Francois LaRue. Bart lets one go. That's blocked. Berg slows the play down just a bit. His feed for Pearson. Back for Berg on the left wing. Berg trying to get around the defenseman Bart, who stopped them. Fizet around the boards comes to the point. York feeds it. Berg tried to send it across, and it was blocked. Claude Boivin. Boivin from the angle, and that was taken away by Jason York. Boivin's got it back again to the point, and it was in the skates of Carl Dykhouse. Dykhouse, the most highly rated Quebec League player eligible for the draft this year. Herbert Hohenberger with a slap shot, and Fife kicks that up, and out of play. Herbert Hohenberger played in Austria last year. Well, you saw Jason York a few moments ago, number 21 for Ontario, and there is an acquisition that the Kitchener Rangers hope will uh, get them over the top. They don't have the same kind of a tough division that the Leyden has, where five teams are battling it out. In the M's, there are three, but the Rangers are very much in it. Now, they had to give away half of that cold cut company that they have in Kitchener in order to get York, not to mention a few players and future considerations for the next number of years, but uh, they're hoping it will be well worth it. Face off goes to the left of... Jeff Fife, Reggie Savage on the draw against Paul DiPietro. A lot of people say his name DiPietro, like his famous football playing cousin. Here's Hohenberger from the right point. Rather than shooting, he just dumps it in back of the net. Reggie Savage is there. Savage covered, comes up on the right side, and Bodnerchuk is loose. Mike Bodnerchuk, he's trying to impress the scouts. Here's Pierce in a lone shot. And I think he was guilty of shooting it right into the LMJHQ logo on Stefan Fazette. That's why it's there. <laughs> Five minutes and 58 seconds expired in the opening period. No score in the game. We'll have another look at that chance by Randy Pierce. As he got right in on goal, it would probably be the toughest save thus far that Stefan Fazette has had to make. Knocked right out in front. Pierce is there, and he didn't want to waste any time getting the shot away because if you give Fazet the chance to set up, he'll rob you. Of course, Fazet did not give him much to shoot at on that chance off the faceoff either. Here's Pierce in the corner with DePietro, and Quebec will break away. Steve Chartrand from Drummondville. He got crossed up with his winger. 
And John Slaney will take off with it. Slaney with a slapper. That goes off Hohenberger's stick. And Speaking a souvenir for the folks in Section W. <laughs> Live, you're watching the fifth annual All-Star Challenge on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall. For all fitness enthusiasts, the Parks and Recreation Department offers several aerobic and senior science classes for beginners and intermediates every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, recreational basketball and volleyball are available at noon from Monday to Thursday. For more information, please call 933-3586. Well, no score yet. Six minutes, 37 seconds. And I guess with Dick Todd coaching OHL's entry, Jack, uh, we can expect a 2-1 or 3-2 game, can't we? Well, that's as long as the boys listen to what Dick has to tell them. Certainly, he's been a master of the defensive play over the years, as has been witnessed with his Peterborough Peets. It's been very successful. Yoni Leto hits Keith Primo on the tape. May was unguarded down the left side, but his line mates couldn't get him the puck. Here's Primo. Sends it back in the net. Grolo around the boards. Lado will pinch in. Yanni Lado fires one waist high into the slot. Snell moves up from the right side. Snell knocked off the puck. Now Quebec, Santa Moore. Outlet pass, and here comes Martin Lapointe with Brisbois defenseman going for the goal. There's the pass, and Fife reads it, breaks it up. OHL, put him at three on two back the other way. Stephen Rice in across the blue line. Wines fires, big rebound, cleared away and down the ice. This will be icing against Quebec. I think they expected a little bigger uh, rebound uh, when Rice let go of that shot because on the three on one, Rice normally looks for a man trailing on the play. In that case, he had two guys to his right, took the shot as you look at Paul Holden of the London Knights. And uh, there was really not much of a rebound at all. It's as if this set was able to deaden it and uh, certainly was it within grasp of the Quebec defenseman and down the ice it went. Guy Schwedard. Remember him from uh, junior the Atlanta hockey Atlanta Flames. Mm -hmm. 50 goal scorer. Yeah, he sniped 51 here, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Andrew McKim waved out of the circle. Jan Alston from St. Jean, one of the four 20-year-olds in the Quebec lineup. Francois LaRue, biggest player in the game, six feet six, Edmonton's first round draft pick. He's got the puck now and he hands it right to Cerrone. Cerrone centers looking for Nolan. Nolan made contact with Fazette, drive from the point, and that's whistled wide by Jason York. Here's Nolan again. So Ricci would have been offside. Smart play by Ricci, just as LaRue touched the puck, bang, he was right on him. Into the center ice area. Holden trying to keep it away from Alston. There's a break from McKim, but he will be offside. No doubt about that. At the exact eight minute mark now of this opening period, still no score. Well, Jan Alston, uh, Granby native, and that will have to be it for that town as far as their participation in the, o in the OHL Quebec League All Star game. Granby was the only team in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League not to have a representative on the Quebec All Star team. But Jan Alston can uh, carry their colors as a native of Granby. Willett pulls the puck back to Hohenberger and Quebec will hoist it in high. John Slaney back to dig it out. Up the wing for Pearson. Lindros over to help out. He's back to the point. Shot through traffic wide by Dykehouse. John Slaney. An electrifying puck handler. Across the red line and snap it in. Lindros sees nobody going after it. He says, thank you, I'll take it. In the meantime, he bowls over Carl Dykehouse. Berg with a steal. Berg leaves it. Tried to leave it for Lindros. Now Lindros finally has it. Centers for Berg. He was just oh, getting it out of midair was Pearson just wide and the Nets lose the game. Yeah, Pearson went after a low outside pitch right there and tried to catch a corner with it. And he's very adept at doing that. On the Belleville power play, you normally find him at the side of the net, and it doesn't matter if that puck is off the ice on the pass or not. He's able, he's got very good hand eye coordination and a good ball player to boot. Out of the strike zone, but uh, I guess he likes to swing at anything. Well, I don't think that uh, referee Dave Lynch was calling strikes and balls, so he thought he better go after anything he could. I don't think that the coaches involved Dick Todd and Geese Winard are really worried about matching lines here. Although I do know that Dick Todd yesterday, consulting with Sam McMaster of Sudbury, Dave Draper of Hamilton, uh, 
the other two people who helped Dick Todd and pick the Ontario team. Now, what they did, uh, Dick asked them, okay, at the end of the period, uh, come on down, uh, we would like your input. Just as far as forechecking patterns, who's playing well, who's not playing well, things like that. Well, let's face facts. Uh, Dick Todd, as most coaches in the OHL, now utilize the so-called eye in the sky, and it's not uh, not unfamiliar to see somebody on his bench with a walkie-talkie headset on talking to somebody in the press box. And, and when you set a certain coaching pattern, you want to continue with that pattern. And while he might not have the headset or the availability of such tonight, at least those who are watching getting a different perspective from upstairs can give him points or maybe notice things that he can't see downstairs and it might sound weird because you're close to the action but you don't see as much from the bench as you would say from the stands. Well I know last year in the Leighton Division Championship Series after Cornwall won the first two games the Royals went back to Peterborough and Dick Todd and listed the help of his old friend Roger Nielsen to act yep. as the eye in the sky. Yeah, Roger was a, almost a fixture in Peterborough last year uh, when he wasn't doing his TSN duties or whatever else he was uh, doing on the side. But of course, he misses that now. But what they have done is uh, added personnel to their lineup. Uh, they promoted their trainer. And uh, they have put him up in the press box. He also does some scouting for them. And uh, so that's the way he's overcome that aspect of it. Yeah, Jeff Tuohy is being groomed, isn't he? Uh, he's being groomed exactly the way Dick was. Dick was an assistant trainer, then the trainer, then the assistant coach, assistant general manager, and then he got the whole ball of wax when Dryden was fired back in 1981, Dave Dryden. So now I guess Jeff Tuohy could be the next boss in waiting. Who knows? Talk about working your way up through the ranks. There, well, that pane of glass has been a real pain. It has been a big pain this season. I can recall one night with it going out uh, with the Bulls in town, Fred. That's Chris Clancy's favorite pane of glass. Both times that the glass shattered that evening, it was a check by Chris Clancy on a member of the Bulls, and both happened right in the first period, I believe. Yeah, that's what radio guys really love when suddenly you get these unexpected breaks where you've got enough time to go out for dinner and have your shoes shined. And it looks like we're going to be a few minutes with this. Yeah, here, let me tell you about myself. I was born in 1958. <laughs> small town of Chatham, Ontario, down in the southwestern part of the province. No. 58, you, like you look that. an awful lot older than that. <laughs> you, it must be you're living. You're not living right. No score in this contest. 11 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the opening period as they uh, try and tend to uh, the glass and they're getting a camera right down in there to, I don't know, view the, I didn't see it shatter. I don't know if it just broke out it of just there. just popped or out, of the, out of the seams there. Something that Wayne Thompson mentioned off the top of the show, close to or in fact even over 100 NHL scouts on hand at tonight's hockey game. And the reason they're here, uh, a couple of reasons, uh, namely that 23 members of these two teams are still eligible to peddle their services to uh, National Hockey League clubs. And we have some dandies included. Well, no kidding. As a matter of fact, I'm rather surprised that this year there do not seem to be anywhere near as many drafted players in this game. Usually it's a chance to show them off. And in past years, I know Ontario last year had 11 drafted players in their lineup. But this year there's only five, Fred, and that leaves an awful lot for the rest of the NHL to take a look at. Quebec, on the other hand, have 11 players that have already been selected. Five by the Montreal Canadiens. I guess that's uh, no surprise in itself. And uh, there are two uh, by the Quebec. Beck Nordique. The uh, other teams with drafted players tonight, the Toronto Maple Leafs have two of them, including a rather late round pick. I'm just uh, trying to find him Over here. Ranger uh, Steve Chartrand. Chartrand, right. He uh, was a 12th round pick. And the other one at the other end of the spectrum is Rob Pearson as a first round pick. Philadelphia, Edmonton, Washington, L.A., the Rangers, Chicago, and the Jets all have players, their property. But that leaves an awful lot up for grabs. And, of course, people getting an early look at Lindros. Ricci has got to be the main attraction because he is the number one rated player for the upcoming draft in 1990 in Vancouver. Nolan's not far behind. No, Keith Primo, John Slater. I mean, uh, you're seeing probably five of the top ten ranked players in the world for the upcoming NHL draft on the ice tonight. And uh, NHL scouts just don't get that kind of an opportunity to see how they stack up against other top-notch competition. You do not get this many scouts at the Memorial Cup tournament. There's not as much eligible talent on the ice. That's right. So in this case, uh, the notebooks will be filled by the end of the night. And I noticed Bobby Pulford here tonight from the Chicago Blackhawks. 
Nope. Snell with a shot off the draw. There's play resumes now. Shot draw. Dumping it back of the net for defenseman Petrice Brisbois. He just got rid of it out and down the ice. Yanni Leto of the Ottawa 67th back to touch it. Different strategy this year for Ontario in choosing its team. And when it was chosen, on all four forward lines, there were two players from the same team for consistency and familiarity, I guess. Certainly helps because in the case of Quebec, they have had a chance to already play a game. Uh, they played, I guess it was against undrafted players. The hopefuls, they were called. Uh, exactly, in Quebec. So at least Guy Schwinard has had a chance to work his guys, practice, and even see them in a game condition. However, the Ontario team didn't come together until Monday when they were picked up by bus. Snell for Ottawa just dumps it across the blue line. Brisbois very capable of taking off with it, but DePietro with the puck. Shot saved by Pizet, and he'll dive out on the rebound. And Pizet uh, proving to be a bit of an ir irascible sort down there, Jack. Uh, as soon as he makes the save, he brings the blocker and the stick up, uh, just protecting his turf. Well, I don't know if uh, he was expecting Ontario to uh, perhaps get in his face a little bit more to try and disturb his concentration. So you take a look again. Di Pietro getting the quick shot, obviously going low on the glove side, and Facet read it very well and uh, was able to get down there and make the stop. Looked like Di Pietro very close to having the stick above his shoulder when he knocked that buck down. Off the draw, back to hold. He says, hey, I got room, moves up. Rebound is there, shoveled wide by Brad May. Back to the point, and the puck jumps over the boards and into the Ontario bench. Nearing the midway point now, 39 seconds away from the midway point of this opening period of the fifth annual OHL Quebec League All-Star Challenge game. And still no score. Stefan Fazette, the much busier of the two net miners. Oh, no question about it. I don't know what the shots on goal are, but even they wouldn't be accurate in the opportunities or the territorial advantage that uh, Ontario has had so far in the game. All Holden handles the puck off the draw. The head for May. He was checked. Primo cruises in on LaRue. Puck in the skates of LaRouche. He's got 46 goals on the season in the Quebec League. A back checking Brad May comes up with the puck. May not familiar with what Rice was going to do. And as Rice cut one way, well, May sent the puck that way. Holden chased by LaRouche in deep back of the Ontario net. Here comes Stephen Wright dashing down the right side. He can't get around LaRue. And Ontario goes offside. You're watching the fifth annual All-Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall. We remind you that the Big Ben Ski Center is now open for all skiers. Big Ben is open Wednesday to Friday from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Big Ben is also available to groups and organizations for rental. LeBeau with the puck, dropping it off for Dykehouse down the right side. Hohenberger not expecting it. Up with the puck is LeBeau. He loses it. McKim trying to find some room wide left. Puck back to Hohenberger. And the Hull Olympic defenseman dumps it in. Nolan covers LeBeau. Bennett over there. McKim is stripped of the puck by Nolan. Nolan gets past one man. Here's Cerrone with Ricci. Fed for Ricci. Ricci gets it. Tried to move it back to Cerrone. That was broken up by Dykehouse. Behind the net, Nolan tries to walk right out front with it. Slaney was retreating. And LeBeau brings it up ice for Quebec. LeBeau with Hohenberger trailing. That rush thwarted by John Slaney as Quebec changes up defensively. Here comes Slaney. He goes end to end here often during the regular season. Trying to blow wide on Grolo. Centers it. Cerrone with a drive. And that went off his stick and bounced crazily out the other side. Quebec with a lead pass for Willett. Now fight wandering out of the goal to move it up the left side for Cerrone. Dore hammers Cerrone. Blind sides him from behind. Grolo up with a buck now for Quebec. Lead pass for Dore off his stick right to Cerrone. Cerrone did not see Rob Pearson fresh off the Ontario bench. He may have been able to get a stride on Grolo. Now they battle forward in the corner. Ravin flips it out to Willett. Intercepting now is Chris Snell. Snell stick handling across the line. 
He's knocked down by Boivin. And Quebec will try to come out again. On the right side for Dore. He's got Willett breaking. There's the feed. Willett in a lone shot, and he hit the goal post. Willett jumps on the puck and boards. Tried to feed it around. No penalty coming up on that. Here's Brisbois trying to plug the left point. Not successful. Puck in some skates. It will come back to LaRue, and he snaps it the other way. Chris Snell feeds it for Lindros. Lindros will chase to the corner. There are 13 feet of player. All alone in front is Berg, and it jumps over his stick. Back comes Quebec. Willett down the right side. He's got to be tired after the breakaway chance. Feeds it across, and Fife comes up with a glove save on Claude Boivin. Now it's stolen by Reggie Savage. He dipsy doodles his way in front. Loose puck for Fife. He says, thank you very much. Time for a break, guys. This is the most sustained pressure that the Quebec League have had on uh, Jeff Fife in the game so far. It's uh, basically been Jeff down there all by himself. But Willett taking that feed walk right in on goal. Fife seemed to stumble a little bit. And as Willett uh, tried to reach down with the, uh, rather Fife reaching down with the glove, he uh, ended up having it go off the post. Now watch this, the feed in for Willett. He popped it off the post, but Fife had stumbled just ahead of that, which threw him off balance. Well, the Petro will take the face off against Reggie Savage. The Petro leads the Ontario Hockey League in scoring with 49 goals and 47 assists. Red hot lately for the Sudbury Wolves. Yeah, all season. Buck flipped outside the Ontario blue line, driven right back in by Bart. Paul Holden. Feeding too hard and high for Pierce. Comes right back to him. Hit the linesman. Ontario dumps it in. Bodnerchuk races in back of the goal. Bodnerchuk feeds for DiPietro. DiPietro sends it back to the point. York looking out in front, and that's scooped up by Fizet Hilling on. Seven minutes and three seconds left in the opening period. We have yet to see a goal. As coming up in the first intermission, Smart Hockey with Mike Bossy and scoring highlights, although right now we're not going to send the boys to the video machines trying to thread through to find out where they are because there aren't any. Scoring highlights? Well, it won't take very long, will it? <laughs> then what are we going to do? Let's talk about ourselves some more. Primo against <laughs> Savage on the draw. We want to hear about you. Won't Shot off the draws wide. Nothing that could go on family television. Here's Primo trying to feed across for Rice, broken up. And Hohenberger's going to lug it. Hohenberger with Savage and Chartrand. Hohenberger drives one glove, save fight. And he'll hang on to that. Well, I think it's often the case in games like this, Jack. Well, a player will quickly discover he cannot do the things at this level of play that he's able to get away with in regular major junior hockey league play. Well, I'm not even sure if it's a case of getting away with anything. I mean, the OHL now is uh, such a strong league overall, but let's face it, you take a strong league and make it stronger by taking uh, the best from either league, Quebec or Ontario, and uh, obviously you're not going to be able to just go out and do what you might normally do. A point with a shot from the angle. St. Amour goes to the corner, back to the point to Dykehouse. He tees one up, rebound, sent through the crease by St. Amour. LaRousse wheels and fires. And that was blocked out in front. Hit a broken stick over there. Ontario having some problems getting out of their own zone. They do now. And Brad May with a long dipping shot on Stefan Fazette. Cleared around the boards. May's right there. Fires low and wide. Snell steps up from the right point position. Snell feeds Primo. Primo with Dykehouse all over him around the boards on the left side. And St. Amour gets it out. Fianni Leto from Finland. Ahead for May. May losing it. Hohenberger hits LaRousse. LaRousse across the blue line with St. Amour. There's the shot, and it's blocked by a sliding Snell. The point into the corner. Can't come up with the puck, and Brad May is going to take his time and feed it for Snell down the right side. That doesn't click, and Snell retreats to his defensive position. Did they name the locks after him? The Snell locks? Yeah. Is that a brand? <laughs> the locks? There's Snell locks out there, Fred. This is your backyard. You don't know about the Snell locks? No, I've got a key. 
<laughs> Bucks don't bother me. Stoppage in play with five minutes and 39 seconds to go. Still no score. It is fifth annual OHL Quebec Major Junior Hockey League All-Star Challenge. Well, last year it took 44 seconds for Ontario to get on the board, and Quebec had counted twice before the end of the first period. The big period for scoring was in the third when Quebec scored three straight times to put it away. And to win that game by a score of 5-2, but so far the goaltenders have been hurt from time and time again. Both ends of the ring. John Slaney in the head for Ricci. Ricci will dump it in, and Ontario will chase after Grolov. 16 years of age. Pass stolen by Nolan. Ricci head for the goal. There's the feed, and Brisbois really bailing out his younger defense partner. McKim outfoxed himself, trying to make moves at the blue line. LeBeau. He stopped and here's Cerrone after it with Grillo. Cerrone dragged down Grillo up with the puck. I wonder if they can get through the game and they enter the SO penalty free sweepstakes, Jeff. <laughs> well, let's see here. Yeah, I guess so. Nobody else is sponsoring it. Here's Big Eric, Eric Lindros, and Patrice Brisbois stopped him with this game. And then the latest draw just dips. Brisebois in the corner. Lindros centering now for Pearson. Lindros takes a run at Dore, and Dore ducks out of the way. Big hit by Pearson down in the corner on Brisbois, and we have got a slashing minor and the first penalty of the game. So so much for the friendly free sweepstakes. Yeah, you had to say it, right? You had to come. Doing a good thing. That's right. Anyhow, uh, it had been scoreless and penalty-less up to this stage in the game. So now a power play coming up as Danielle Dore is going off at 15:25. So Ontario will get a chance to put out the power play, and we'll see exactly what Dick Todd plans to use. I guess you can't really go wrong with anybody in his lineup, but at the moment you pretty well have to figure that later when Snell will be quarterbacking at the blue line. Yeah, who's next? Just send him over the board. Got every line's a power play, really. The way they stand, they certainly are, and especially as you pointed out earlier, with the lines having two out of the three from the same team in almost every case. Except and the line that's out there, of course. Except <laughs> this one, right? <laughs> DiPietro with Pierce and Bodner Chuck. Well, they're doing the problem with that same sheet of glass. I don't know if it's with the bracket well, brace in there or what it is. Part of the problem when the Civic Complex was built, you can't tell. By the naked eye, well, I guess you can in some cases, but all those panes of glass, Jack, or the majority of them, are different widths, different measurements. Just a uh, potpourri. Yoni Lado sizes from Ottawa. 67's picked up in his uh, second year in the OHL, but a 19-year-old. And talk about him coming from Turku, Finland. And you have Herbert Hohenberger from Villach, Austria. He played in Austria last year, then uh, came back this year uh, playing defense for Hull. You so have truly an international. Uh, Owen Nolan lineup. from Belfast, Northern Ireland. There you go. Now all we needed was uh, George Durian from Ottawa. He comes from Beirut, Lebanon. Beirut, Lebanon. <laughs> what oh, country was that you came from? <laughs> Well, Jeff another. Fife has not been as busy as his counterpart, but in the last few minutes, Quebec certainly had the pressure on, and we're getting a real goaltending display. For those doubters as to what Jeff Fife could do, I think he's answered them so far in the first period. Pissette has proven himself on the international stage, and so everybody knew what his qualifications were coming into this one. Now the question is, will Dick Todd stay with one goal goaltender through the entire game, or go to his own Todd Boysoon, who is on the bench? No, if, if it's a tight game, a one-goal game, I think Dick Todd will stay with Jeff Fife. And in a way, you really have to feel sorry for Todd Boysoon, a, a fine young netminder who was the odd guy out when it came time to pick a backup for Stefan Pizet for the national junior team. And who knows, he could be, we're not saying it's for certain or anything, the odd man out here tonight behind Jeff Fife. Go with the hot hand, and Fife has it right now. Well, this again just demonstrates to you that this is not your normal everyday all star game. Winning is foremost in the minds of the players, coaching staff, and indeed in the league. They've got a little bet going uh, between the commissioner of the OHL and the president of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, where the loser will wear the winner's colors across the ice, I guess. Whether well, they might have to put Vince Lombardi's picture on the trophy. Challenge Cup. Winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. 
to Petro to Snell. One time by Leto. And a pad save made by Fizette. That had eyes getting through there because there were about seven players between Leto at the blue line and Fizette on the goal line. That's his nickname, one timer, Yoni Leto. As players often have catchy little nicknames on their underwear, and it's one timer on Yanni's. You, you looked? I saw the press boxes right, or the press rooms right by the Ottawa dressing room. You know that. There's a one timer. Bogner Chuck scores. Mike Bogner Chuck on the left face off circle, and he just one times one. Pass to Fan for a power play goal. Ontario opens the scoring. Well, the Kingston right winger will take the pass cleanly, and getting the shot away was the key, and he kept it low into the corner. Here's the pass from the point. Bodner chuck open, and bang, right into the corner of the net. Now with the lone assist on it, Mike Bodnerchuk with 31 goals this season for Kingston breaks the scoreless tie. And here's Dore swooping in from the angle, trying to stuff it short side on five. Nothing doing. Back the other way, Stephen Rice crossed the blue line. Primo gets in too soon, and that is whistled down. Mike Bodnerchuk of the Kingston front and axe. A young right winger that has really come into his own, Jack, this year. Well, uh, now suddenly he has a cast of players to work with. Uh, two years ago as a rookie, uh, the disastrous year when the Canadians lost 28 straight. Last year, a young club getting to know each other that missed the playoffs as the Raiders and now with a veteran crew uh, under Larry Mavity and the front and axe in first place in the late division. Bodner Chuck is a big reason why. Turning with the puck. Is Hohenberger just dumping it down the ice? And Fife comes out to set it up for Holden. Dore right on him. Willett with a quick shot wide. Rice will pick it up in the right wing. Can't get it past the Boivin. Jason York clears the zone. And Hohenberger comes back to collect it. Herbert Hohenberger, longest name in the All-Star Challenge game. You're counting letters. Paul Holden. Some people are big on trivia, such as that. Chase in York, as the OHL breaks out nicely. Primo trying to get around the last line of defense. Hohenberger, Boivin now. He's got some room to operate in the center ice area. Just kind of rolls off his stick, and Brad May says, thank you very much. May feeds Rice. Rice lets his shot go, and he fell down in the shooting process. Hohenberger with 2.43 to go in the opening period. Down the right side for Chartron. Steve Chartron steps across the line. Cerrone covered the player he tried to dish off to, and Ricci comes back, bounces a pass off Chartron, and Owen Nolan wants the puck, but Fizette beats him to it, shoves it off the glass. Kept in at the point by the Ontario defenseman. Drop pass, Ricci drives the angle. Big rebound cleared away. Comes back to Adam Bennett. He dumps it in end boards. Nolan is there, centers, bounces off his stick, high into the slot, and Reggie Savage picks it up. Dishes off to Chartrand on the right side. Chartrand breaks, tries to feed it into the slot. A back checking, Nolan will pick it up. He curves it up the left side for Cerrone. Now Ricci and Slaney, two on two. Ricci is wide right, trying to get around the defenseman, Grolo by himself. And Ricci is almost headbutted into the end boards. Nolan with a big hit on number 24, Patrice Brisbois. Andrew McKim dashing back, shot from the angle, kicked out neatly by Jeff Fife. Snell in the rebound, and he jammed his stick into the end boards and very dangerous situation there as the stick got jammed into the opening where the boards meet the ice. Ontario coming back with more pressure uh, since the last goal. They seem to be spurred on by that and Mike Ricci doing some good work uh, but he couldn't outmuscle Francois Grolo along the boards. However, Ontario on the line change so he didn't have any choice but to try and eat the puck, maintain possession for as long as he could to allow his team to complete its change. Eric Lindros back out on the faceoff against Andrew McKim. <coughs> McKim with 53 goals. And that is tops in Quebec this season. And McKim wants to play well tonight. He's not that big, and size certainly a factor against him as far as his NHL draft prospects go. Here's Eric Lindros taking off with a puck. 
Lendros hits the blue line, snaps it into the backhand. They chase after Claude Bart, who gets rid of it quickly. Leto from the point with a high drive, and Fizet saw it at the last minute, got the blocker on it. LaRue with a hit on Lendros behind the net. Buck squirts free. Comes to the point for Snell. He's using the boards and comes right back to him. Less than a minute to go now. The opening period. Ontario leading 1 0 on the Mike Bachner Chuck power play marker at the 15 59 mark. Yanni Lado dumps it into the far corner. LaRue pursued by Berg. LaRue kicks it free to the near corner. He's got Alston up the right side. Tic tac toe into the neutral zone. LeBeau back for Alston. Alston makes the shot, drops for LeBeau. LeBeau walks in, forehand, backhand, can't get the shot away as he was knocked down. Buck flipped around the right side, the goal scorer, Bodnerchuk. He'll be joined now by Bob Burke. Bodnerchuk trying to squeeze his way through. Two Quebec players down, walking in. There's a shot taken by Bob Burke. Another high drive to the point by Holden is high and wide. The Petro tries to hook it out in front. And Hohenberger will take over with 10 seconds to go in the period. Owenberger sidesteps to Petro nicely. Long shot blocked by Holden. Comes back. There's a wrister by LaRouche. And that floated wide. St. Amour behind the net and time expires. And the Ontario Hockey League will head to the dressing room leading the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League by a score of one to nothing. You are watching the fifth annual All-Star Challenge Hockey Game live on Rogers Cable 11. Goal, the power play marker by Mike Bodner, Chuck. It came 34 seconds after Daniel Dore had been sent off with one of those retaliatory penalties that drive coaches crazy. This one for slashing. Well, the big thing was 30 shots and just the one goal, and the slashing penalty may have led to the goal, but let's take a look at all those stops that didn't lead to any goals because both Stefan Facet, who had 18 shots on him, and Jeff Fife, who had 12 on him, were outstanding in that period. They showed why they are all-star uh, all-star goaltenders and and uh, certainly the coaches had no complaints with either. One thing with Ontario, though, a lot of the shots coming from the blue line and Quebec were keeping their men deep to clear rebounds, and that's helped the set to a large extent. But how often can you remember either goaltender having to make a second stop? And so far, that hasn't been the case, and of course, that's a compliment not only to the defense, but both teams are playing good defensive hockey, including from the forwards. There was a, an incident late in the period where uh, Eric Lindros took out uh, Patrick LeBeau, in behind after LeBeau had been trying to muscle his way in front on Fife. But Lindros was the man back, taking the man out of the play, and then the period ended harmlessly from the Ontario perspective. Well, Dick Todd and his assistant coach, Mark Crawford of the Cornwall Royals, sending out the same line to start the second period, as did the first, Ricci between Cerrone and Nolan with Bennett and Slaney on the blue line. And Quebec also going with the same fivesome of skaters. McKim between Alston and St. Amour with LaRue and Bart. On defense, referee Dave Lynch signals the goal judges. Period number two is underway. Bart ahead for St. Amour. Slaney tips it the other way. And Ontario will forecheck on LaRue. Ricci after him. Nolan got a piece of the puck. Bennett in from the right point position. Bennett in the corner. Nolan helping out. Bennett dumps it back of the net to the far corner. Ricci after Bart. And Bart moves it ahead. Cerrone had his man covered, but McKim escapes. Andrew McKim in across the blue line. Spun around, knocked down. Adam Bennett up the right side. Bennett, the sixth player chosen overall in the last NHL draft by the Chicago Blackhawks, their first round selection. Slaney with McKim in pursuit. Does the smart thing into the center ice area. Cerrone and Nolan cross the blue line. Cerrone dishes off. Nolan bumps his man. Loose puck in the corner. Ricci pounces on it. Dykhouse came in high and hard on him. St. Amour looking across ice for Alston, and he was going for the bench. Alito for Nolan. He'll just dump it in and stream back to the bench as well. Dykehouse for 78th on the left side. He's hit by Bob Berg. Lindros out there as well for checking, and it's cleared past Snell. And he chases a rolling puck deep into Ontario territory, breaks behind the net, and surveys the options. It's Lindros down the right side. Lindros tried to go rink wide to Burke, broken up by Savage. 
Chartres after the loose puck. Snell beats him to it. Hohenberger controls across for Dykaus. Didn't wait long enough, and that's offside. A minute 37 into period number two. Ontario leading 1-0 on the Mike Vodnerchuk goal. Andrew McKim, all five feet, eight inches tall, a frustrated hockey player, particularly with Verdun last year before his trade to Hull. But perhaps the best thing that could happen to Andrew McKim was Theoran Fleury of the Calgary Flames, who now is opening the eyes of scouts and the thinking of general managers that maybe smaller players in today's NHL, not such a bad thing. I mean, you have some big defense, you've got big wingers, you can get away with a smaller guy at center, and Fleury has certainly proved that since coming up about a year ago to the Calgary Flames. Yeah, you can go right through Francois Roos legs. There you go. On a rush. Well, they've added an assist on the Ontario goal to Yanni Leto. So it now reads Bodner Chuck from Leto and Snell. Grolo chasing deep in back of the Quebec net. At the right side for Dore. He shovels ahead. Looking for Boivin. Goes the length of the ice. Boivin drags down York. Bodner Chuck back deep helping out. Dore after him along the far side boards. Pierce chops it ahead for DiPietro. DiPietro stripped of the puck by Boivin. He fires it across to Grolo. Francois Grolo. It's LeBeau. Good stop. As number 44, Paul Willett. One time to feed down the left wing. And Jeff Fife showed some great reflex action. Scrambling across to get the right pad and the stick on it. Stephen Rice taking off on his off wing. Drop for May. May for Rice. Behind the net. May centers. And DePietro was there, but it was just tipped away by Santa Moore. Andrew McKim loses his footing. Santa Moore met by Adam Bennett right in front of the Ontario bench. Bennett with the puck now. Down the left side for Brad May. May will shovel it in. Rice and Primo will forecheck. LaRue are out of the right side. May try to hold it into the line and it comes back to the Ontario stripe, manned by John Slaney. Slaney just banks it up off the boards, returned the other way. As the team's right now having trouble putting a couple of passes together, Slaney hits Primo. Primo dumps it off the far corner boards. As it came in front, it was picked up by Bart. On the left side for St. Amour. He breaks out with McKim and Alston. Fed on the right side for Alston. St. Amour trails, picks up the pass, looking out front for McKim. That was broken up. And Brad May comes back. May for Primo. He's all by himself. And stripped with the buck by Dykaus. He shot it off the linesman. Dykaus still has it. And it comes back to him a second time. Alston. Looking for Dykos, broken up. Aledo ahead for Ricci. Ricci with Cerrone. And as they tried the crisscross, Hohenberger stepped up. There's a two on one for Quebec. Sevenier with McKim. McKim sends it across, and it went off the stick of the defender and bounced harmlessly into the corner. McKim seemed to be in no man's land, didn't know if he wanted to shoot or pass off, elected to the pass at the last minute, and it was taken away. He wanted to see what Snell and Fife were going to do first before making the play. Dykhouse tripped up back of the net, regains his footing, clears it down the right side, too far for Chatra, and Paul Holden comes back with 78 in pursuit. LA Kings draft pick is Paul Holden, Reggie Savage. Pins him in against the boards. Ricci tries the other side for York ahead for Cerrone. Jason Cerrone just tried to dump it in. Fanned on it. Buck comes down and Jason York's across the blue line. York drops for Ricci. Ricci across as Pearson moved in. And that was intercepted neatly by Patrice Brisbois. Brisbois across the blue line for 78. And his slapper is blocked by Belleville's Bob Berg. He brings it back up ice with Lindros and Pearson. Berg. Losing it. Grolo. Now Berg chases back of the net again with Grolo. Left there. Lindros jumps on it. Lindros behind the goal with that big wingspan of his. Trying to get it out front. Broken up. Chartra bailed up with John Slaney ready to hip check him. Jeff Fife will set it up for Adam Bennett as Quebec makes wholesale changes. 
Slaney into the center ice area. He gave it up. LaRue for LaRouche on the right side for Dore. Nowhere near him. Lindros, a two-line pass, and we'll get a whistle. 5.42 gone in the second period. Still a 1-0 Ontario lead. I don't know if we still have that save by Jeff Fife a few minutes ago or not on the replay, but boy, was that something because he had to react from coast to coast in the net, and somehow you thought it was the stick. I thought it might have been a skate that he got over there to block the corner, but boy, is he an agile goaltender, and he is prepared for anything. He had to go from one side to the other, even though the play didn't look that way from an apparent point of view, but he was thinking all the way and made quite a stop. Souvenir for the gang in the penalty box. Eval Amir, the PA announcer. George Bougie and Jacques Fournier assisting him. Yvonne Lemire has been doing the PA for as long as I can remember. Even I'm a Cornwall resident originally, and uh, I remember him doing the Royals games, a game back at the old Water Street Arena back in uh, the early days of the Royals when they were Major A. Early 70s. Adam Bennett straight up the center ice track with help from Rob Pearson. Pearson finds the quarters rather close, even though he was in open ice. Dore with a delayed penalty coming up to Ontario. Barber with a high drive that caught Fife right in the neck area. And that's enough. Dave Lynch blows the whistle, I think, partially because he feared Fife was hurt. And then Ontario had the puck. So Quebec's first power play opportunity of the game is coming up. Adam Bennett going off for hooking. And at 6.07, Quebec will have a chance to tie the game if they can. The only goal in the game so far has come in the power play. And that by Ontario's Mike Botner Chuck in the first period. So Bennett going off for hooking. So we'll now get a chance to see what Guy Schwinard has up his sleeve as far as power play is concerned, they're going to send Andrew McKim in for this faceoff, and uh, he's going to be opposite Paul Di Pietro to the right of Jeff Fife. McKim on the faceoff for Quebec, and kind of a switch this year, Jack. We see Brisbois and Rollo on defense for Quebec. In past years, it seems Ontario always had the huge defenseman. This year, Quebec's defense is larger. Five of their six defensemen over six feet tall. Brisbois feeding side of the goal for LeBeau. He was covered and Snell picks up the loose puck and he shoots it into the Ontario bench where Cornwall Royals head trainer Dave Can was ducking for dear life. And Francois LaRue, a skyscraper unto himself at six feet six inches tall. That puts him up there uh, with Primo and guys uh, of that ilk. I guess uh, Lindros is a short one compared to he's only about six four six four and a half if he's only 16 he might grow another four inches might grow another four feet that the basketball coaches are pretty <laughs> bummed out when they find out that uh lindros is a hockey player <laughs> i'd still i'd still go with primo and larue they could be my centerman any day at six feet six inches tall how are forwards you, you talked about 100 scouts being here from the NHL. There's also four <laughs> from the NBA. The Petro stays out there to take the face off once again against McKim to the right of Jeff Fife. Buck is down and the Petro wins it to Snell. He fires it off the boards into the center ice area. Patrice Brisbois who spearheaded the comeback against the Soviet Union on New Year's Day in Helsinki. Leads down the left side for McKim as the Ontario supporters, or rather the Quebec supporters, come to life here. But they're going to have to cheer their troops on while they go back and dig the puck out. Mazette runs it around the boards for McKim. Andrew McKim on the wing for LeBeau. LeBeau with Alston trailing. LeBeau slows it down. And they'll work from the points. Grolo steps up, stick handling into the slot. Lost it. He wanted to feed Brisbane, but Randy Pierce had him covered. Yeah, but the thing is, Quebec right now is overhandling the puck, and Ontario has been right on top of them. LeBeau trying to get loose again. Patrick LeBeau back for Grolo, and finally Quebec will dump it in. Fife quickly out behind the net to leave it for Holden. He's got his man open on the wing, Jason Cerrone. 38 seconds left now on the minor penalty to Adam Bennett. Ricci. Covered in the corner. And knocked down by LaPointe. Fans wanted a penalty there. Nothing doing, says Dave Lynch. Chartrand brings it across the blue line. And 
what have we got here? Ricci with some retaliation, perhaps, or is it Jason Zeroni? It's a holding call coming up against Ontario. Ricci let Lynch know of his dissatisfaction with the call, but I think he might have been responding as the captain, as opposed to. Oh, wait a minute here. We better get turned around. The hold is going to be against number 22, Steve LaRouche. Okay. I saw the door to the right hand side of the penalty box open for it. And having been in here so many times with Delville, knowing that was the visitor's box, I got turned around. So in 25 seconds, when Adam Bennett is out of the box, Ontario on a power play. Meantime, they'll play four on four. For those 25 seconds, Dykehouse clears it in. Snell across for Lado. Lado ahead for Brad May. Gets away from him. He'll chase after Dykehouse. May goes down, takes Dykehouse with him. May seems to be hurt. Nope. He's a tough Playing kid. Possum. <laughs> he certainly. He, oh, uh, he might get delay a delay of game. Of game. No. No, it's a uh, the delay of game. Uh, uh, Nate well, Lynch was just whistling the face off to come outside. May is getting assistance. He just popped up. As you can see there, he is getting assistance to the uh, bench. And uh, so he was hurt. He just didn't want Quebec to know it very badly. So in eight seconds now, Bennett out of the box and Ontario on that one minute, 35 second power play. Lindros and Berg up front. As Jeff Fife counts down the seconds. Plato drives one in off the pad of Fizet. Dykos hammers it around the glass. Plato trying to plug the point. He's rammed by Savage. Pearson holds his man off the puck. And here comes Lato stepping across the blue line and rings it around the boards. Pearson far corner. Behind the net now, Berg and Lindros are there. And so too is Hohenberger. He gives it right to Snell. The Lato one time shot bounces crazily. Side of the goal. Berg trying to feed it back into the corner. And it jumps up and out of play. One You're watching the fifth annual All Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall, who are offering a unique program at the Kinsman Municipal Center. Kids Crafts Parents Splash gives toddlers one hour of crafts, storytelling, and exercise while mom or dad swim free. Register now at the Kinsman Municipal Center. Off the face off, Quebec wins it and fires it down the ice. Quebec shorthanded here. The Ontario power play with Bodner Chuck along with Pierce and DePietro up front. As DePietro brings it across the blue line, Pierce handles it. Bennett holds it into the line. Slot for Pierce. He heads for the goal. Tries to stuff it. Saved by Fizet. Pierce has it again. Far corner back to the point to John Slaney. He winds, fires, and a Quebec player got a stick in the way, and it rockets up into the crowd. One thing that uh, led to the first power play goal by Ontario is the fact that they changed the program on Stefan Fizet with Lado shooting those one-time shots on the net and Snell doing likewise. The key on that goal was the fact that Lado, or pardon me, Snell, found Bodner Chuck open, so he rerouted the puck to the side of the goal and in but now they're going back to those direct shots at the blue line and facet has shown that those aren't going to beat him so they're going to have to get a little bit more creative either that or try and get a man open a little better than they are 30 seconds left now in the penalty to LaRouche there's John Slaney left point right side Bennett he steps up sends one in on goal comes back to Slaney wheels fires all kinds of traffic in front of Fizet. dumped into the corner to Petro to the point Slaney keeps it in John Slaney and along the boards for DePietro back to Slaney. He drives one pad, save made by Fizet. He makes it look so easy back there. Fizet centered! Pierce jammed at it as DePietro centered it from behind the net. And Randy Pierce right there with a great chance. Then he paid the price with LaRue. Here's what Fassette has to contend with with the Ontario power plays. Owen Nolan leading the league with 20. Paul DiPietro with 17. Then you've got Rob Pearson out there with 13. And then you've got those howitzers back at the blue line and Slaney as well as Lato and Snell. Uh, you're going to be busy, obviously, and with three seconds left. I'm sure uh, Fassette just breathing a sigh of relief that this power play for Ontario is in its final moments. 
will take the face off for Quebec. He's from Longay. Jason Cerrone, the point for Holden. Holden's shot bounces harmlessly into the corner. Ricci digging for it back of the net. It comes to Grolo. Ricci all over him. Grolo gets help. And it's cleared out and down across the Ontario blue line. Paul Holden back to retrieve it. Around to the left side is Cerrone. Cerrone's normally a center, but he's been shifted to the left wing to get some more Cornwall Royal flavor into this game for the hometown fans here. York into the center ice area. Too far for Nolan. Grolo the other way for St. Amour. Drop for Reggie Savage. He's got some speed in with a shot, and he tried to go between Fife's legs, but he put it to waste time. Now we've got some pushing and shoving in the crease. Owen Nolan, who's no stranger to that sort of stuff, involved with Claude Boivin. Now coming up during the second intermission, uh, Wayne Thompson will be a rather busy lad. Uh, first of all, a tribute to Canada's junior hockey team. And then Wayne will have along OHL Commissioner David Branch and Larry Carrier. Remember him with the Buffalo Sabres? Well, you'll get to meet him during our second period. The intermission as well as some scoring highlights. Uh, so far, we're in the same boat we were in the first period. Highlight-wise, there's not a lot to talk about. Well, great tribute, let me tell you, to Canada's national junior team, which has been put together by Drew Miranda, who is the video man for Canada's Olympic team. And it is a treat to watch. And right now, Ontario is shorthanded as Jason Cerrone has been sent to the penalty box. So he picked up the lone minor from that exchange in front of the net. I thought that Boivin and Nolan were the main com combatants, but Jason Cerrone also did something that incurred the ire of Dave Lynch. Now Lynch hasn't been too iris uh, that much tonight. That's just the fourth penalty called in the game. Second against Ontario. Quebec is 0 for 1 with a man advantage and in fact took a penalty uh, during the last power play they had. Reggie Savage will take this face off as they try and sort it out getting Lindros back into the face off area. <laughs> Keep an eye on Bob Berg in this penalty killing mission. If he gets a chance he's not afraid to go for it. Dumped in by Brisbois. Off the board. Snell is there, and it's loose for Bob Burr. This might be his opening. Burr barrels down the right side. Looked like it might have been offside as he had to drag the puck in behind him. It doesn't matter because Quebec has it. Reggie Savage. Quarterbacking from in back of the Quebec goal. Grolo. Down the left side for 78. Dumped into the far corner. Chartrand in pursuit of it. Arrives there with Alato. Savage digging in the corner. Loose for Lindros. He backhands it out and down the ice. 45 seconds gone in the penalty to Jason Cerrone of Ontario. And Ontario leading 1-0. Here's Brisbois. Feed for Savage. Shot in that head room. Top corner blocker side on Jeff Fife. And he made the save. Here's DePietro. One-on-one -on -one against Dykels. DePietro overskates the puck. 78. 78 from St. Hyacinth and across the blue line. Chartrain in the corner. Dumped back to the point to Hohenberger. Return to Chartrain. Left point now for Dykos. He unloads and it's wide. Slaney tries to chop it out. Chartrain right on it. Behind the net. LaRouche up the boards now. Two Ontario players right there. And DePietro and Pierce come away two on two. DePietro. Almost got around Hohenberger, who finally stopped him, and Martin St. Amour back in across the blue line. Puck rolls off the end of his stick. He'll keep it in at the line, but he gives it right to Holden. 15 seconds left now in the Cerrone minor. I talked about Berg a few minutes ago going on shorthanded. Uh, Randy Pierce with five shorthanded goals for Kitchener this year, so he too is a threat out there. Lead pass as they try to spring LaRouche in behind the Ontario defense. Penalty to Cerrone is over. Ontario back at full strength. Jason York feeds it on the right side. Jumps over Nolan's stick. He goes after it. Trying to feed for Mike Ricci. Ricci with Cerrone. Across for Cerrone. Great stop. What a stop. 
Excellent save by Stefan Fusset, anticipating all the way that the pass would come out in front. And when you put guys like Nolan and Ricci around the net, uh, you, you've got to expect something spectacular, and that's exactly what they had. Watch the play. Ricci off the boards. Nolan make that Cerrone going right to the net and just deflects it. Doesn't stop the puck, doesn't try and shoot it on the go, just tries to deflect it, making sure it's accurate, and a great stop by Stefan Fusset. Quebec has relied heavily on its goaltending. Boy, I guess they have. During the history of this All-Star Challenge Series, and another chance right there. Owen Nolan snapped one, and Stefan Fuzet made the stop. Neither team has changed goaltenders yet, Fred. Uh, they're going with their starters. Fuzet for Quebec and fight for Ontario. And when you've got a one to nothing game going for you. I guess there's no reason to change, especially when you're not at an exhibition. Todd Boysoon's down there at the end of the bench, his head down saying, now if I come back for my overage year, Fife can't be back, so maybe I'll get a chance to play. Here comes LeBeau for Quebec and across the blue line, trying to mesmerize Paul Holden. Ricci had his stick tied up. Alston grabs him, so Paul Holden says, I'll take it. Owen Nolan. It's the blue line. Cerrone can't do much with it. And back comes Andrew McGinn. Ricci chops him down and will go to the box. We'll be back with a Quebec power play. You're watching the fifth annual All-Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall. Do you want to start a hobby today? Special interest program registration is going on now for children and adults workshops and classes. Come start a new hobby today. For more information, please call the Arts and Culture Office at 932-4422. Third power, power play chance of the game for Quebec. Ontario leading 1-0. Mike Bonner Chuck power play marker from the first period still standing up. Boisvin in across the blue line. Puck comes back to Brisbane. He moves up from the right side. Lado in high with an elbow on Chartra. Down in the corner and Chartra winds up on top of the puck for a faceoff as Eric Lindros gets involved now and kind of towers over the rest of that game. Yeah, he's, he's in different atmospheric conditions up there compared to the rest of them. The weather forecast doesn't hold the same for him as it does for That's right. Else. Environment Canada has to issue a, a separate yep. forecast for Lindros, although... Mike Ricci is the only player with the Ontario All-Stars that was in the game last year and, in fact, was the most valuable player from Ontario last year and currently sitting out a penalty. Back to Brisbane with a drive, and that's kicked out by Fife. Although if you saw Mike Ricci in the Ontario dressing room last year, he wasn't too happy about winning that award. The type of competitor that he is. He wanted to win the game, and the personal stuff, well, if you get it, great, but winning's the thing. Pierce and DePietro up front in the penalty-killing role. Here's Chartrand dashing down the wing. Out in front for Willett, and John Slaney tipped it just wide. Fired around the boards, DePietro racing after it, Stefan Fazette with a gamble, and it pays off. <laughs> that was almost a two-line pass by Fazette, except that Pierce got a piece of it. Centered, cleared away by Fife. Loose in the corner, Bennett out in front, Slaney finds it, spots his opening, and shoots it down the ice. Obviously, Fazette, a very, very good puck handling, that minder. And Jeff Fife has certainly improved in that area, too. Leaving it behind the net for Holden, he rockets it around the boards. 35 seconds left now in the Ricci minor. Herbert Hohenberger back to retrieve the puck. Hohenberger straight up the center ice track now. Lead pass for Reggie Savage. He stops St. Amour's there. Tried to go top corner. Was wide and Jason Cerrone will send it down the ice. I don't think Quebec has had more than one even halfway decent chance so far in this power play opportunity. Ontario has done a great job in their own end. Hohenberger gives it to Hartner Bart on the wing. 78 didn't see it. And Ontario wheels and fires it into the neutral zone. Penalty to reach, he's over. Ontario back at full strength with the one nothing lead preserved. Reggie Savage lets the puck go. Would have been a two-line pass, and he'll 
put the wheels on against Jason York, but it looks like they'll call it icing as it did cross the end red line. Four minutes, 30 seconds to go now in this second period. Mike Badderchuk with the lone goal of the game. It came in the first period at the 15-59 mark from Chris Snell and Yanni Lado. Quite a contrast from the first time these two teams met in 1986 in Ottawa, the first of a two-game set with the next night in Hull being the other venue. 15 and goals. Yep, 11-5, make that 11-4 Quebec that night. And the next night they followed up with 11 goals, although it was a one-goal uh, difference. Quebec beating Ontario 6-5. The lowest-scoring game came in 1988 in Hamilton, a 4-2 Quebec verdict. Notice a pattern in all of that. <laughs> Quebec's won them all. <laughs> The pattern that Gilles Courteau is quite happy with. Brad May wheels and fires, and that catches Fizet high. Brisbois for Alston. He's joined by LeBeau and Kim. Alston wide right, trying to test fight from long range. Shot nowhere near the net as it was deflected. And big Keith Primo lumbers down the wing, swings into the slot, forced to the far side boards. Lato steps up. As there was a big crunching hit there thrown by Francois LaRue. Scramble out in front. Cleared away. Comes back to Snell. Rice shoots from an angle. That's why Lato steps up from the left point position. LaRue in collision with May in the corner. Brad May trying to kick it free. McKim has him tied up. LaRue escapes with the puck. Down the left side as Rice took a run at Brisbois. Here's Patrick LeBeau and across the Ontario blue line. Walking right into Olsen. Swings right. Great stop by Fife. What a save by Jeff Fife to keep Ontario ahead. Well, Alston was so frustrated he bent his stick in half. Boy, what a save by Jeff Fife. If we could see it again, you're going to see some concentration on the part of a goaltender. This is the key to success. Now it takes a bad bounce right in to Alston. Right there. Watch this. Fife knew where he was going. He just followed him and the puck and just went down and stopped it. Made sure there was no rebound. And that has been the story of the game at both ends of the rink so far. Dykehouse back deep for Quebec. Off the boards. Gets past Bennett. LaRouche chases Slaney. Slaney rings it around the left side for fellow Cornwall Royal Cerrone. Into the center ice area. Quebec drops it back off as Ricci took a run at Boivin. Quebec dumps it in the game. Slaney just gets rid of it into the neutral zone. Hohenberger returns the favor. And Adam Bennett of the Sudbury Wolves will try to get Ontario organized. Around in the wing for Cerrone. He's met quickly. They jam away at it. Ricci. Who did he hit? LaRouche. LaRouche has got the puck, though, from the right side. Across for Chartrand. Got past him. Fife dives out. And we have another Ontario penalty coming up with 2.43 to go in this second period. Chartrand and Nolan are having words down there. There is a penalty coming up. We're not sure which way it's going yet. You're watching the fifth annual All-Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department. And seniors are available at the Kinsman Municipal Center. Also being offered at the Kinsman Municipal Center is a variety of recreational swims, plus synchronized swimming and competitive swimming. For more information, please call 933-3586. Quebec on their fourth power play coming up. They are 0 for 3 as Owen Nolan goes on for slashing at 17-17. One goal lead. I mean, Fife's been doing a heck of a job, and the penalty killers have been certainly on the bit tonight, but you don't want to keep testing Quebec, who have eight of their top ten scorers in the lineup tonight. I don't know if that's a good penalty or not, as Nolan put the lumber to Chartres. I think it was after Chartres had lost the puck. Get back on the power play. Brisbois out in front, and... It goes up and pulls the glass, another play, and the faceoff will come outside the Ontario blue line. Fourth power play chance of the game for Quebec, all in this period. In fact, as Jeff Fife has been the busier of the two net miners, although Stefan Fazette has still made some sparkling stops. Capacity crowd here in Cornwall tonight, and you were saying it's the first time that's happened during the regular season since they retired number 10 down there at the south end of the ring. February oh, 25th. That's We're at the east south end. end. That's east end. February 25th of 1988. I did. I never oh, did get my 
his badge of Surrey. Dale Howard Chuck Knight. Martez St. Amour to the point. And the puck comes outside the blue line. The Picho thought he had a breakaway, but the puck did come across the line, and linesman Frank Glebe made the correct call. Now, if Francois Grolo hadn't been busy putting his helmet back on his head, well, it would have been no problem keeping that in at the point. Yeah, by the time he made the adjustment, the puck had just slid out. It wasn't the helmet, it was the chin strap that did it, I think. Frank Lieb, I wasn't sure initially that he was going to call it. He had his arm up, but I didn't hear a whistle, and I thought, can't have a delayed offside now, and obviously you couldn't. Much to the chagrin of Paul DiPietro, who was off to the races to the east end of the ring. <laughs> I should put signs up. Carl Dykhouse. On the right side for Alston. Alston will contend with Lado. Curls, sends it to the point to Brisbois. Back for Alston. Alston handling. For Brisbois laterally across the blue line for Dykehouse. Dykehouse sends it into the corner. Lebeau is there, let it go. Comes back to him. Patrick Lebeau, a nice drop feed for McKim as Quebec works the periphery right now. Dykehouse. Trying to hold it at the point. Snell jumps on it. And Ontario might have a break here. Ben Merlin drops down the right side. Trying to lean in there. Great move back. And an equally splendid stop by Kazet. A penalty coming up for Japan. What a move by the big kid from Toronto, Eric Lindros. It defies logic. It defies physics as to how Lindros can make that kind of a move when you're six feet five inches tall. But watch this. He is going to play the puck around the defenseman, Brisebois, and still get in to get a shot away. And all of that pushing Quebec into, uh, into a penalty as going off is going to be Carl Dykos. 18.34 will be the time of the penalty. Cross-checking. Well, for those of you watching and saying and wondering, is Eric Lindros that good? I think he gave you an answer right there. Keep in mind, this young man is going to get better and better, probably bigger and bigger. He's only 16 years old, not even eligible for the NHL draft till 1991. So they skate four on four for 28 seconds. That's right, Lindros won't be 17 until the end of next month. Get him a birthday card? I will. Get him a present? Not stretching it. Okay. Only yeah. met him once. Steve Chartrand around John Slaney. But Adam Bennett helps out. Chartrand ducked the check. And taking off with the puck is John Slaney. Ran into his own man, Ricci. Bennett gives it back to Slaney down the left side. He'll just dump it in. Nolan's out of the box. And Ontario back in a power play. Ricci behind the net. He's blocked out. Knocks down LaRue. LaRue up with the puck. It went off. Ricci and Stefan Fazette comes out to cover and exchanges pleasantries with his former national junior teammates. Ishwina can't be very happy just by virtue of the fact not just taking the penalty, but it's the second time in the game that Quebec has taken a penalty while they were on the power play. So their power play is showing an 0 for 4, but two of those occasions interrupted as Quebec went off. Ontario is 1 for 2 with the man advantage. And with a minute and six left in the penalty to Dykos. However, the period clock will be more a problem for Ontario. Just 32 seconds left in the second period. The Petro, Berg, and Pearson up front now for Ontario. Or Botner Chuck is the other winger. Buck sent back to the point to Snell. Snell for Lato. One timer off a stick wide to Petro from the angle and Fizet recovers magnificently. Andrew McKim the other way with Reggie Savage. McKim trying to turn Snell inside out. Look at the buck handling clinic here being staged by Andrew McKim. Clinic still over. Still has it down there as finally Bob Berg knocked him off the puck with four seconds left in the period. Andrew McKim gets a well-deserved round of applause from the Quebec faithful here. And there was a busload down from Hall today to cheer on the Olympics in this game. Herbert Hohenberger and Andrew McKim and Carl Dykhouse. A goaltender's duel so far. And Dick Todd yelling some instructions. Actually, it looked more like he was yelling at the Quebec player. I don't know if he was giving Jan Alston a, a earful or what there. It's just a fun game, Jack. And the oh, second period is over. 
as the fun continues. 70A and Lado mixed up, and we've got a gathering of the clan down there in front of the Ontario net. There was a fight in last year's game. And now quarters remain rather tight and guarded as the whole scene shifts to the end boards. Everybody grabs a partner, and away we go. Stefan Fazette, meantime, in an act of solitude, back at the Quebec Blue Line. Everybody <laughs> gathers, the and few, then they break it up. One of the few times he's been alone tonight. Uh, like he's, he's waiting for the national anthem. Exactly, he's standing at attention at the Blue Line, but uh, the attention will now be Diverted to our second intermission coming right up. One nothing Ontario leads. You're watching the fifth annual OHL QM JHL All Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. Fred Fletch and Jack Miller in the press box awaiting the start of the third period. A one nothing lead still for Ontario. The Mike Bondarchuk power play goal holding up Jack. Actually, uh, what this is, these were just handed out to the media. All media will uh, determine who their player of the game is for uh, yeah, let one. Let fill in yours now. Okay. Well, well, exactly. I was, that was my point. It wouldn't take much right now to figure out what names are going on. Fight for Ontario, Pusset for Quebec. It's as plain and simple as that. These two goaltenders have been outstanding, and I would have to think frustrated to the opposing shooters. Well, Ontario shooters will have a 34-second power play when period number three commences. That's the uh, power play. Dykehouse uh, is in the box for cross-checking. Went off at 18:34, so 34 seconds remaining in it. The power play has been the difference, if you will, uh, just because there's only been one goal scored in the game, and that was on the power play. Mike Bodnarchuk at 15:59 of the first period. Now, does strategy change at all, or do the coaches just stick with what has been successful? In the case of Dick Todd, protecting one goal leads is something he's famous for, particularly when he plays in his own building with that guy as his main man, Mike Ricci in Peterborough. However, uh, with Quebec, uh, they've been pouring on as much pressure as they've been allowed, and Ontario's been downright stingy, as is Jeff Fight. Snell with the puck, drops it for Lado. Skated in across the blue line. Lado into the corner for Owen Nolan. Lado, point for Snell. Snell lets one go. A knuckler bounces in behind. And Gazette batted it out of harm's way. Another penalty coming up. Another penalty to Quebec. One will just expire in three seconds as they blow the play dead. And Ontario will stay on a power play in this third period. They will have a short-lived two-man advantage, just three seconds if they can get a uh, hold of the puck at that point, then uh, they might be able to do something with it. Otherwise, of course, it's just a case of keeping the pressure on. And for Quebec, they don't want to keep tiring men out, although when you're dealing with this kind of a lineup, I guess it almost doesn't matter who you send out there to kill penalties. They're all very talented. Francois LaRue will get the gate. Referee Dave Lynch calling six minor penalties in the second period. Seven in the game prior to this one. Let's go, Ontario! And to expand the press box to let LaRue win. Six feet, six inches of him. Dykehaus up the box now. And LaRue in. Ontario looking for a little insurance here as Adam Bennett. Brings the bucket across the blue line, wide left around McKim. Bennett will break in the corner and survey the options. Gives it to Pearson, back to the point to Slaney. Slaney whips it across, Lindros into the slot for Bennett, broken up by McKim, and McKim's away. Slaney will defend against him. McKim swings forehand, break three, and just as he was shooting. Nice play by John Slaney. He got knocked off the buck by Slaney, as John Slaney weaves his way back in there, tripped up by Alston. Lindros feeds Berg, chopped off his stick by Brisbane. Adam Bennett will drive it in around the boards, 50 seconds into the penalty to LaRue. Quebec clears it to the point, plugged by Slaney. In along the boards, this is Berg, behind the net, Pearson. Pearson shovels to the far side, gets it back from Lindros. Brisbane in the corner, Lindros dumps it to the point. Adam Bennett winds and fires, and that goes off a stick high and wide. Berg now looking for the point man, and John Slaney had moved the wrong way from where the pass was going, and Ontario now with 40 seconds left in the power play. 
Lead pass, missed Berg. Botnuchuk races after it, circled the net, and he centered it short side. It was picked off there, and then goes off the stick of Snell, up and out of play. Well, while we have a chance, Jack, we want to take this opportunity to pass along a message from number 10 for Ontario, Brad May of the Niagara Falls Thunder, a message to his grandfather back in Markham. Mr. Andy Kerr and Brad May says simply, this game is for you, Grandpa. Very nice sentiment. Paul DePietro. Now with Bader, Chuck and Pierce. 30 seconds left in the penalty to Francois LaRue. Buck dumped in by Ontario. Hollenberger. Can't get it out, but Reggie Savage will do the, draw, the job. Savage. Not invited to the national junior team training camp this year. That ruffled a few feathers in the Quebec League. Paul DePietro tried to dance his way in there. His path blocked by that Quebec defense. And LaRue's out of the box. And Quebec has dodged an OHL power play bullet. And Wagner Chuck down the right wing. Runs into Dykhouse. Hohenberger snaps the puck around the boards. No icing, says linesman Steve Qualian as Yanni Leto. The Ottawa 67s via Turku, Finland. Head for Stephen Rice. Rolls off his stick. He goes to the end boards with Hohenberger. Quick centering feet. Loose there. to Petro swept in. Brad May tried to turn around her. And Willett beats for St. Amour. They get past Holden. But they overskate the puck to Willett and St. Amour. And Ontario dumps it back the other way. Gorlo has to wait for Meeks to get onside. He clears it in. Holden with Willett right on him. Berg is hit. He fed it ahead for DePietro. DePietro loose with Weiss. There's the head man feed. Rice in the right wing. Got past Gorlo, but the puck did not. Primo trying to take it in, but that's offside. 3.33 into the third. It's still a 1 0 Ontario lead. Well, you mentioned the Quebec League rather upset that Savage was not invited to the National Junior Camp. Uh, they were particularly upset that only three players were invited, and two of those came out of the NHL. And Daniel Dory and Stefan Fassette both uh, joining the team basically from Quebec. And uh, outside of that, uh, the Quebec League didn't have an awful lot of representation, and they certainly let it be known that they weren't happy about it at all. Daniel Brisebois was the only other one there. Halston from the angle, and Fife gave him absolutely nothing to shoot at. Stephen Rice, he's got a trailer. Keith Primo swooping in on that. Can't get a shot away as McKim Payne came back defensively. Patrick LeBeau he collects the puck. He's got some open ice. Swings past Stephen Rice. LeBeau feeds McKim on the right side. Winding up with the drive, and Fife was a ducky. Stephen Rice now on the wing to Brad May. May tried a feathery little feed for Primo that didn't click. Fazette missed it behind the net. Chris Snell. Touches the puck and it's a delayed offside call. For those who follow the Ontario Hockey League, uh, you might notice that the numbers being worn by the sweaters tonight are the exact numbers that they would wear with the representative teams. Only two exceptions to that. And one is Rob Pearson, who was a late addition to Mike Craig. And if Craig was in the lineup, he would have worn his number 15 that he does with the Oshawa Generals. Pearson's number is six, and Snell has that, so Pearson's wearing eight. The other player not wearing his sweater is Jeff Fife, who normally wears 29, but Matt Holden has it. So they have given him the more traditional 31. So two Belleville Bulls have been kicked out of their, their sweaters. Well, Rob Pearson, we had asked him Monday night, or rather Sunday night, to go to the All-Star game. Well, if I have a ticket. He did, too, by the way. He, he was coming. <laughs> Lado snaps one in from the point, and it looks like matching minors coming up now. Owen Nolan jawing with Francois LaRue. Ricci's also in there. I believe we're getting matching minors. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, there's a good contingency of Belleville players here tonight. They were planning to come anyway, and uh, as part of the coaching staff, uh, training staff, they all made the trip down after practice. Shroni in the box with La Martin LaPointe. So they will not go by the Ontario rules with a four on four. They will stay at five on five. 426 will be the time of these penalties. 
Ontario leading one to nothing. And the lone goal came on the power play. Mike Bodnarchuk, 15-59 of the opening period. Since then, it's been in the hands and stick, feet, and all other parts of the goal team. Maru behind the net. And they put a hip to him. Looking down the wing for St. Amour, and that one was broken up sharply by Yanni Lado. It's amazing the hand-eye coordination of these guys, the way they're able to bat that little piece of rubber out of the air. Look at how many are able to deflect it when it's, uh, say, a few inches off the ice with pinpoint precision. Many of them are just all-around good athletes anyway, not just in hockey, but many other athletics. Lado for Snell. He's got Ricci loose. Ricci, side of the net for Nolan. Nolan backs off into the corner, sends it behind the net. Brad May playing some left wing on this line. Lead pass for Boivin. And he was spun around before he touched the puck. You could have argued an interference call there. But the play continues. Ricci's pass is blocked. May will pick it up down the left wing. May with a shot. Blockered off into the corner by Fazette. May bumped by Hohenberger. Nolan tried to center it. He's squeezed out along the boards by Dykhouse. May also in there. And it's loose now for LaRouche. Stephen LaRouche, 46 goals in the Quebec League. Came, comes back. There's a shot just wide by LaRouche as it came back to him. He just kind of trailed in there lazily in behind the flow. Nobody picked up the puck. They were all tying one another up. Pearson's got a lane to the goal. Back for Ricci. Shot. Oh, larceny by Fizet. What a nice play. And there were all kinds of options for Rob Pearson. And there is a penalty coming up for slashing. And it's going to be against, I thought it was about Tassin Moore, but apparently not. We'll have another look at it. Maybe watch this play. Rob Pearson to Mike Ricci in front. And perfect pass. Bang. And Fassette is down and has it. What a great play by Stefan Fassette. Someone in the box. Let's go. Well, the uh, Quebec All-Stars being penalized, but nobody Herbert sees Hohenberg. it. It could be uh, the penalty to Fassette. It's hard to say. Hohenberger is going off. Yes, it is. Hohenberger for slashing. I thought for a minute perhaps Fassette had picked up the penalty, but he was too busy. He's good, but he's not good enough to glove a drive like that and slash somebody at the same time. Another Ontario power play. Oh, let's go. Ontario is 0 for 4, or rather 1 for 4 with a man advantage. Bob Byrne. He's out with Pearson and Lindros. Stripped of the puck, though, by Reggie Savage. Snaps one glove save. And it stays trapped in the glove of Jeff Fife. You're watching the fifth annual All-Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall. We remind you that the Big Ben Ski Center is now open for all skiers. Big Ben is open Wednesday to Friday from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Big Ben is also available to groups and organizations for rental. Terry on a power play. Yell yank. Or Snell yanked down by McKim. And now Snell gets loose. Across the blue line. They just shoot it in around the board behind the net. Bart finds an opening and he sends it down the ice. 50 seconds into the minor penalty to Herbert Hohenberger. The Petros line out for Ontario. Pearson Bodnerchuk with him, the line that scored the game's only goal. But not having much luck penetrating the Quebec blue line here. And Snell has to come back and set it up again. This is off to his Ottawa defense partner, Yanni Lado. Lado fires far, corner to Petro, races in along with LaRue. LaRue wins the battle, clears to the point, kept in by Snell. Snell into the slot. Bodnerchuk fan this time. Pierce after the puck. LaRue beat him to it. Bodnerchuk dragged down, and the puck somehow got past Lado and down the ice. 25 seconds left now in this Ontario power play. The OHL's fifth of the game. 
DePietro swings back in behind his own net. Alston hot on his trail. Here's Gianni Leto into the center ice area. Cutting across that Quebec blue line. Drop pass for Bodner. Chucky curls the point. Spots Jason York off the bench, but the pass was off the ice and York couldn't keep it in. York brings it in a second time. Slap shot. 70 got a stick in the way. To the goal again in a poke check by LaRue. LaRue. Into the center ice area now. Quebec back to full strength across the blue line. And Quebec is offside. Chartrand, the puck carrier, and his winger. Looks like 70 got in too soon. Yep, Chartrand had one thing in mind, and that was Jeff Fipe. He was not looking left. He was not looking right. He was looking dead straight ahead. And uh, turned out LaRue jumped in there a little too quickly. 12-13 to go in the third period. It's still in a one to nothing game, and personally, I'm somewhat surprised. Uh, I didn't expect a shootout, not with the kind of talent that you have defensively and in net. However, I certainly thought we'd see more than one goal by this point. You forgot Dick Todd was coaching, perhaps. That's not fair to say either. Well, it, it's all in the players' hands, really. Keith Primo in across the blue line. Primo stopped, loose puck, and it's gloved away by Hohenberger. That was the only option he had because his stick was underneath him. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if players just suddenly settle into one coach's system inside of 24 hours or not, no. but let's face it, we're dealing with very talented hockey players. Who well, Dick had stressed the defensive part of the game in the lone workout the players had together, but I think that's because of the fact he knows all these guys are offensive fire houses themselves but again plus minus wise and I don't have the figures in front of me I'll bet you Ontario almost everybody on the ice is at least a plus of some sort there's Willett from the angle sends it through the lip of the crease back to the point Hohenberger's shot is wide Willett circles the goal centering pass side of the net and I think Fife got a piece of that too Jeff Fife matching step down for Zett. Big save for big save as he kicks out a drive for the point by Hohenberger. And Stephen Rice comes down the right way. Drives it in hard and Ontario changes up. Hohenberger on the wing for LaRouche. He'll be met by Bennett as Quebec dumps it in. Nearing the nine minute mark of the third period. So one nothing Ontario lead. Ricci knocks his man down against the boards and he'll get the game possibly for boarding as Slady then comes in hard. Mike Ricci back to the penalty box. Are they going to call it boarding or what? Now we'll wait for the indication. It is going to be cross checking against Mike Ricci at 907. So Quebec go back to the power play for the fifth time in the game and they have an over going. Just coming back to uh, what we were talking about a few minutes ago. In terms of leading scores, if you look at the top ten in the OHL, five of them are not in this game. Five of the top ten are, so those that are here aren't just offensive-minded players. For instance, Darcy Cahill, who you know well and uh, certainly very, very good around the net, lots That's of points, second. but he is he's a minus. He is a big minus. So, in other words, his game isn't equal. It, he's a good offensive player, but not good at his own end. That's uh, the, the toughest position to, to break into an all-star lineup. I think we've seen that year after year in the NHL, the center ice position. Cahill and Brett Sagan, who's third in scoring, both centermen. Quebec trying to jam it in front of this power play. Andrew McKim brings it into the corner. Grillo with a shot from the point. Fight kicked out the right pad and skate. Laveau after Cerrone far side boards. McKim digging for it as well. And finally Ontario clears it out of the zone. Sent to an open wing and Jan Alston comes back for it. Alston swings around Randy Pierce, crosses the blue line, stopped, and Jason Cerrone will spot his opening and shoot it down the ice. Stefan Fazette plays the puck late to Pierce, quick shot, and it was just wide. The opportunistic Randy Pierce, five shorthanded goals, and that would have been his biggest one of the year. McKim brings it back in across the blue line. McKim moves to the far side into the quarter. Jason York will pick it up. No, he's tied up. Holden knocks it to a free area. He shoots it, and he's got the Petro. One-on-one -on -one against Brisbois. Tough man to go against one-on-one. -on -one. And Brisbois effectively does the job to knock it back into the corner. 
Sabatier with Santa Moore. McKim still out there and across the blood. Winding up with a shot. He scores, but it's offside. It is offside. Had already gone. The Quebec player was pushed offside. And I think as soon as the whistle went, Fife heard it and he relaxed. And the goal will not count. You're watching the fifth annual All-Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall, who offers sleigh rides, public skating, and cross-country skiing at Gano Park every Sunday from 12 noon until 4 p.m. The Parks and Recreation Department reminds you to use your leisure time wisely. Ontario wins the draw, shoots it down the ice. 33 seconds left in the penalty to OHL captain Mike Ritchie's off for cross-checking. Carl Dyke circling get away from Bob Berg. Reggie Savage swings down the left wing. Puck goes to the right side, though. 78 will dump it in. Fife scurries out of the net. He's in his skates. St. Amour picks it up on the near wing. Back to the point. Dyke out. Lines fires. Berg got a stick on that, and it's up. And... Manon Gaillard, the executive secretary of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, has herself an all-star souvenir, which she sends into the first row of the seats. Seven seconds left in the penalty to Mike Ricci. And one to nothing continues to be the score for Ontario. Talking about some of the players that aren't here, that if this were just an exhibition, if it was strictly an all-star game, probably would be. Darcy Cahill with 89 points. Brett Sagan, uh, Chris Taylor already with 38 goals this season. Joey St. Aubin and Gilbert Delorme to name a few. Chris Taylor, the only guy that I thought perhaps overlooked for this team. Left wing position, but again, Brad May has certainly acquitted himself well tonight. Adam Bennett digs the puck out from behind the net, reaches out of the box. Rice looking down the left side for Berg. Hohenberger back behind the net. Lindros with a steal. Slot for Slaney and it jumps over his stick. Adam Bennett has to chase after the rolling puck. He just gets rid of it. Pass to Dykehouse. Hohenberger behind his own net. Can't get it out. Brad May fakes. Sends it in behind the net. Primo is there. Primo looking to center. John Slaney steps up and the shot is nowhere near the net. Snell, right point. Just bangs it in back of the goal. Brad May has it poked away. Gets it back. Primo with the big long reach behind the net. Fed to the point for Snell. His wrist shot. And that sails just wide. Rice now keeping it away from Willett. Centering feed. Comes back to Snell at the right point. Snell into the corner for Rice. He let it go for May. May quarters close against Hohenberger. Centers it. And it goes to Willett. Willett gives it to St. Amour. Martin St. Amour can't get around Snell. And here is Sevenier met by Brad May. Meanwhile, OHL's John Slaney across the line of the drive, and that was just wide. Quebec will get it now. Dykehouse down the right side to Chartres. He's got Ricci tugging at him from behind. Ricci goes down, but he did the job to stop Chartres. Owen Nola, crowd favorite here at the Cornwall Civic Complex. Drop feed, read perfectly by LaRouche, and it's sent back down to the Ontario Blue Line. Nearing the 13-minute mark now. 1-0 Ontario continues to lead on the Mike Bodnerchuk power play goal in the first period. LaRouche gets away from Cerrone. Slap shot from between the legs of Lado and Jeff Fife probably didn't see that until the last minute. Cerrone feeds Nolan on the right side. Nolan's got some room. Tried to center it for Cerrone who had moved in. Nolan on the puck again. This line has to be a little bit tired. Here's Mike Ricci with Holden. Tried to dish off to Cerrone. That was read by LaRue. Cerrone keeps it in. Finally, Quebec escapes LaRue on the wing for LaRouche. He mishandled it. Cerrone, he's really tired now. But hasn't given a chance to get off the ice. And now he'll get one with a two-line pass picked up by Jan Alston. 6-18 remaining now. The last thing you want at this stage in the game is suddenly to fall flat because you have tired troops out there. And Dick Todd desperately wanted the line change, but with Quebec in possession of the puck, he couldn't do it. And Jason Cerrone was definitely showing the effects of a very long shift, as did Mike Ricci. However, now some fresh troops to come out for this face-off, which will be inside the Quebec blue line. De Pietro and Pierce will get ready to the left. Bodner Chuck on the right. 
to Petro. Drops it off for Bennett. He'll step up, flip it in back of the Quebec net. Bart is there. Ahead for McKim. McKim on the wing for LeBeau. LeBeau wide from the angle, shoots high off the end glass. Bart in from the right point, deflected by McKim. Wide. Bodner Chuck racing back down the right wing. Mike Bodner Chuck with Randy Pierce. Bodner Chuck swoops in behind the net, tried to center it. Randy Pierce went after it. DePietro, four checks behind the net, comes up for the puck. Gets it back from Bodner Chuck. High in the slot, it's Slady wrist shot. And that looked like an in and outer. Hit the crossbar. It hit the crossbar where the crossbar joins the post. A game of inches. John Slaney almost lost the puck in front of his own net. Slaney fires it around the boards. Bank pass to Petro loose. To Petro with Pearson trailing. Pearson on the back end. Cuts forehand. And it goes right through the crease. Shot from the angle. Pearson in behind the net, pinned against the boards by Hohenberger. Pierce trails in behind the play. DePietro also helping out. And Snell is going to retreat with LaPointe coming after him. And now we've got a penalty to Hohenberger behind the play. Will Pearson join him? Looks like it. Rob Pearson making the cut in front of the net on Stefan Fassett. And one thing that Pearson is not shy about doing and that is getting a piece of a goaltender when he can. Uh, Rob Pearson never met a goaltender that he liked. And now that he's met somebody he's never come across before, I mean, this is brand new territory for Robbie, who's been known as one of the worst goaltender baiters in the Ontario Hockey League. And if those uh, antics aren't enough, 40 goals certainly don't exactly put him in their good books either. Well, I'm sure he has a few stories to chat over with Owen Nolan in that regard. Notches on their belt. Matching minors to Hohenberger and Pearson here at the 1458 market. Really doesn't affect the situation down to the ice as they use the Quebec goal or the Quebec rule. Coincidental minors, you continue to play at full strength. Eric Lindros centers Berg and Rob Pearson. Alato and Snell on the blue line for Ontario. But Quebec has the puck off the draw. This is 16-year-old Francois LaRue in across the blue line. Tried to jump around Snell. Snell hooks it back up the right wing. Rice hooked from behind. He lost his stick. And he's going to play a little soccer and try to move it across to Berg. Great effort by Stephen Rice there. Snell steps up. Shoots it in. In the first period, that's a penalty, Jack. <laughs> Don't you agree? Definitely. <laughs> but not with four and a half minutes left in the game. Chatron for Quebec. He clears it in. Fight wandering a bit out of the goal to move it up the left wing. Stolen again by Chartra. He's on the backhand centers. Rejected though by Snell. And away swings Big Eric with Reggie Savage wow. knocking him down. Bed for Berg. Two on one. Berg tried to send it across, but Maru broke that up. That's a second penalty. Definitely not called as the referees in the crowd make their feelings known. Lynn drives down the left side for Bob Berg. He's got Bodner Chuck breaking pass intercepted by LaRue as the fans really up in arms now. Quebec dumps it in deep. Holden in back of the goal and it's icing against Quebec. Boy oh boy Eric Lindros was yanked down by Reggie Savage in the center ice area but no penalty. You are watching the fifth annual All-Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall, who are offering a unique program at the Kinsmen Municipal Center. Kids Crafts Parents Splash gives toddlers one hour of crafts, storytelling, and exercise while mom or dad swim free. Register now at the Kinsmen Municipal Center. Shot from the point by Jason York. Kicked out with authority by Vizette. Here's Santa Moore banking it ahead. For Boivin, wipe out of the net. Boivin with it again. Centered and it looked like a football machine down there. Off a skate and a stick and Jeff Pipes gear as well. Bode Bart back deep for Quebec. Three minutes, 25 seconds to go. I don't know whether to say regulation time or not. They have to give the cup to somebody. They have to decide a winner. You mean we don't come back tomorrow and do it again? <laughs> I guess the expense account runs out at midnight. Carl 
Paul Dijkhuis of the Hall Olympics. Maru. Wabwabe. Broken up by John Slaney. Dijkhuis with the puck. Dijkhuis for LaRue. Lucena Moore in. Trying to feather a little pass for Wabwabe. Owen Nolan with a big hit on him. Nolan ahead for Ricci. Ricci being hooked from behind. Ricci, LaRue filled up. Ricci goes to the goal and puts it Mike Ricci coming up with the insurance Ontario has so badly wanted but couldn't get. And what a job, what a display coming in off the right wing boards and just muscled his way in front of the net. Pissette gave him a corner. Now watch the play. Owen Nolan has it developed to Ricci. They're still working. Now in this particular shot, LaRue looks like he's got Ricci contained, but then he falls down. There's the wide open corner and there's a player down with Pissette. And Ontario takes a two to nothing lead with 241 left in the third period and that will certainly lead to a relaxation of Jeff Fife who has certainly been up to the challenge for back in the third period. You don't hear Mike Ricci cheered in this building very often. Wait till the next name is announced and you'll hear a big roar. Oh and Nolan who Dug the puck out of the corner, deep in Ontario territory. And off the faceoff, Ontario dumped it in the game. McKim to the line, Berg will handle it. And send it the other way. LaRue, who's wearing some goat horns out there now. Cleared it in, Snell sends it the other way. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go. Mike Ricci has just given Ontario a huge goal. Pearson in the corner, pinned against the boards by Brisbois. They continue to battle for it. Looks like Brisbois is riding the bucking Bronco down there. McKim flung around, able to hook it into the center ice area. Shot right back in by Lado. And LaRue gives it away to Pearson. And Eric Lindros ever hammer Francois LaRue after LaRue dumped the puck up the wing boards. Here comes Brisbois with Bob Berg digging at him from behind. Ontario back checkers and four checkers playing like they are possessed right now. Here's DePietro with his steal. Sends it across. Pierce on the backhand. He can't handle it. Pierce centers it again. Botner Chuck tried to drive it. Reggie Savage got in the way. Less than 90 seconds to go now. As Chatron brings it in. Paul Holden trying to cover him behind the net for Savage. Savage with Holden trying to contain two Quebec skaters in behind the net. Savage tried to wrap it out in front. It goes, empty net, slap shot, that's it. Oh, Holden with the empty netter. 160 foot shot down into the empty net. He put something on it to make it a three to nothing Ontario advantage after Poussette had been pulled in favor of the extra attacker. And at 18.52, Ontario can close the cover on this one except for one thing. And I'm sure that's riding on Jeff Fife's mind. You're not right going now. to mention it? Nope. A little superstitious, are you, Jeff? A whole bunch. Paul Holden. Wasn't deflected, was it? They gave the goal to somebody else, but it was, in fact, Paul Holden who is being congratulated with the high fives down there. One minute and eight seconds remaining. Stefan Fazette returns to the Quebec goal. And Ontario is going to win the All-Star Challenge for just the second time. Brad May out there. Didn't want to put himself offside. May runs into Grolo. Here's Stephen Rice trying to muck his way to the goal. That's a wrist shot go held by Fazette. And he'll hang on to it for a face off to his left with less than a minute to go. Now 48 seconds and Ontario well in control at 3 nothing. Forty-eight seconds left, and the mission right now is to keep Jeff Fife's shutout intact. I know I shouldn't have said oh, it. Oh, way to go! All right, well, listen. If they score, the redhead will kill it. you. If they score, I'll tell them. Off the face off, a shot by Brad May, kicked out by Fazette, as the steam song just played. Na 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 na, hey hey, goodbye. 
for the buck. Here's Brad May. He goes two on two with Primo. May trying to put a move on Brisbane. Out in front. Shot by Primo and Fuzet has to make another stop. As they play for pride now, trying to keep the score down. But it's all Ontario. 3 nothing is the lead. The goal scores in the game. Paul Holden, Mike Ricci, and Mike Bodner Chuck. Randy Pierce was credited with the last goal, Fred, from Paul Holden. At 18.52 into the empty net. So the Kitchener Rangers represented on the scoreboard along with London. Slap shot from the point, stick save. Rebound lies loose in front. Hohenberger kicks it. But Nolan picks it up. Snell gives it back to Nolan. 14 seconds left now. Leto with a shot. That's cleared away by Pizet. Nolan with it again. He'll feed the same point. Man, Leto broke his stick this time. Three seconds left now. McKim kills the clock. And Ontario has won the Chrysler Challenge Cup by virtue of a 3 0 victory over. The Quebec Major Junior Hockey League All-Stars before a sold-out Cornwall Civic Complex crowd. We'll be back with the medal ceremony presentations and also the presentation of the Chrysler Cup. You're watching the fifth annual All-Star Challenge live on Rogers Cable 11. The OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall. Do you want to start a hobby today? Special interest program registration is going on now for children and adults workshops and classes. Come start a new hobby today. For more information, please call the Arts and Culture Office at 932-4422. In just a moment, we'll be going down to ice level for all the ceremonies, the presentation of the Chrysler Challenge Cup, and also the photographers will get their film-loaded jack as we look at Jeff Fight, the shutout netminder tonight, but Gilles Cortel has to break out his Ontario Hockey League sweater. He sure does, and that'll make Dave Branch feel pretty good, but he's got to feel good no matter what. Ontario gave a demonstration, and Quebec did the same thing. Keep in mind, this was a one to nothing game until there was less than three minutes left in the third period, but I was most impressed, not only with the goaltending of Jeff Fife, but of the forechecking of Ontario. When Quebec would get across the line, their options were very minimal, and the thing is, as in both cases, first shot on net, there wouldn't be a second because the defenders were there to clear the zone, or at least away from harm's way. And Ontario just did a tremendous job. Jeff Fife had great support tonight. And when you don't see a game that has 72 shots on net in total, ending up with just three goals, one into an empty net, Ontario ended up out shooting Quebec 41 to 31 in the contest. And that's something, 11-8 in the third period for Ontario. There were 14 minor penalties called by referee Dave Lynch, seven aside. And the power play, really the difference, the winning goal came on the power play, 15-59 of the first period by Mike Bodnerchuk. As the Chrysler Cup is rolled out, and I think that fellow right there will be in for some major recognition, Jeff Fife, and Stefan Fassett as well. Well, you look at the history of the All-Star Challenge game, and certainly Quebec goalies have been prominent in Quebec Player of the Game Awards, winning it a total of two times, but an Ontario goalie has never been the player of the game. I think that is about to change tonight as they bring up the representatives of Chrysler Canada and Molson Ontario Breweries. You will now join the words of the announcer Yvonne Lemire for the presentation of the Chrysler Cup.
to get where he is right now. And last I know but not least. Kenzie, the assistant coach of the Belleville Bulls, who is here in the audience tonight, is probably as happy as that young man. Well, we talked about that right off the top. Could Jeff Fife match the net mining of Stefan Fazet? And he certainly does. Ironic a goose egg up at the best weaponry that the Quebec Major Hockey has. Uh, ironically, Anytime you read anything about this game and uh, say the pre standard free holder lately or whatnot, all the talk goaltender wise in Ontario was on top boys soon. I really did not see an awful lot about Jeff Fife whatsoever. And then getting the start and ending up uh, coming up with the game that he did uh, certainly will put his name front and center where it belongs. The Ontario captain Mike Ricci accepting the Chrysler Cup for only the second time. And the first time was more of a situation of winning the right game at the right time. Yeah, they time. won the second game for two games in all, but if you add to the goal, Quebec won it. However, it was it was a safe situation. Whoever won the second game won the cup. So for all intents and purposes, the first game was an exhibition. But no more. It's one game sudden death, and Mike Ricci holding a trophy that Ontario's had a lot of trouble to win. If you're going to go for a victory skate, oh, I would imagine they might just haul that little thing around. If you break down the three junior hockey leagues, uh, the West, Quebec, and in Ontario, the West has dominated the Memorial Cup in recent years. Quebec has dominated the Challenge Cup in recent years, and Ontario dominates the draft. Being uh, rather greedy about all of this, Ontario wanted to show off their best. It's always been felt that if you took the top 20 from Quebec, top 20 from Ontario, that you are going to have an even Steven matchup. You're going to have equal talent. But once you get beyond that 20, the general feeling is right or wrong. The general feeling is that the depth is in Ontario. Well, we're matching the top 20, and you saw a very close game out there. One to nothing until Ricci scored, only because LaRue happened to fall down. Otherwise, it's one to nothing right down to the end. No question about that. Well, in past years, when it came time to choose the OHL All-Star team, they'd look at the two most recent NHL drafts, take the top 20 picks, away you go. You're on the All-Star team, boys. And I've heard the, the talk that there were too many fat cats showing up uh, representing Ontario in the All-Star game. They changed it around this year, and they took many, many undrafted players. They went with guys who thought would do the job for them in a one-game situation. And uh, the selection committee of head coach Dick Todd, Sam and McMaster of the Sudbury Wolves and Dave Draper of the Dukes of Hamilton. Well, they come up aces. They did that, and that's the first time they have taken that approach. In the past, the coaches in general have voted for the team, but now this game had a specific purpose requiring specific kinds of players, although I take 20 of those any day of the week. <laughs> Mike Ricci, uh, let's face facts, tonight showing why he is the captain. Give him an inch, he'll take it all, and Jeff Pfeiffer right behind him, and there's Rob Pearson, Yoni Leto in behind him as uh, they get set to go off and enjoy what has been a sweet victory, but first, until will pose for the pictures so this is the thing they end up they end up getting away from the all-star idea East versus West or whatever it's, uh, forget that if they're going to have an all-star team it's going to be at the end of the year in the meantime they have a one game purpose and they they drafted it if you will accordingly well what do we do next uh, bring in the West all-star team make it a round robin a, a little showcase for uh, uh, perhaps a, a network TV deal Jack. well I think that's already in the works from what I understand and they talk about getting uh, Quebec, the West, and Ontario together in a round robin format, and possibly even bring in, say, the Soviet national junior team uh, or a club team from over there. So these things are already getting kicked around when you have this kind of a, of a show and you have a sellout crowd, as we do in Cornwall tonight, of about 4,000 people. And if you're going to get that kind of response, why not make it bigger? Why not make it better? And let's face facts uh, we don't get to see the Western Hockey League except on rare occasion, and I would love to see 
see uh, some of the names that uh, we hear bandied around uh, out there to come here and play us or we go there and play them. <laughs> Bosses don't want to hear us say that. Their, their old expense account uh, vibes go nuts. But at the same time, it's worthwhile. I think I'd love to see it. Well, a sold-out house, a goal-tending clinic, a, a heck of a hockey game, all the ingredients for uh, a night that uh, really makes this great sport of hockey uh, what it is, uh, what it's all about. As for just the second time in the five-year history of the Ontario Hockey League, the Major Junior Hockey League All-Star Series, the Ontario Hockey League stars emerge victorious by a final score tonight of three to nothing. Well, before we leave the air, Jack and I would certainly like to thank uh, the gang at Rogers Cable TV who made this broadcast necessary. The gang at Rogers Cable TV and McLean Hunter in Hawkesbury helping out as well. Producer Calvin Killeran and for our host down at ringside Wayne Thompson for Jack Miller. This is Fred Pletch bidding you a pleasant good evening from the Cornwall Civic Complex. The OHL challenge is brought to you in part by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall. The Parks and Recreation Department reminds you to use your leisure time wisely by using the many services offered, including two indoor ice rinks located at the Bob Turner Center and the Water Street Arena, plus several locations for outdoor skating, including Yadel Park and Archie. The Kinsman Municipal Center offers citizens an indoor swimming pool plus a gymnasium, weight room, sauna, and judo room. The city has eight large outdoor swimming pools with waiting pools for toddlers. There are several activities to enjoy during the summer months. The city has 39 playground parks, 11 softball diamonds, 7 outdoor tennis courts, 3 football fields, and also the bicycle path along the St. Lawrence River and at the waterfront, the Cornwall Lions Club Bandshell and Marina 200. Come out and enjoy the many diverse programs and activities offered by your Parks and Recreation Department. For more information, please call 932-4422 or 933-3586. Spend your leisure time wisely. While in Cornwall, the crew and teams involved in the OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup stayed at Cornwall's Holiday Inn, conveniently located at 805 Brookdale Avenue near the Seaway International Bridge. The Holiday Inn offers travelers recreational facilities such as indoor swimming, sauna, whirlpool, and exercise rooms. Fine dining can be found in the dining room and at the end of a busy day, relax in the cocktail lounge. Holiday Inn also offers a convention and meeting facility for up to 300 people and special meeting room packages for convention delegates. For more information and reservations, call 1-800-HOLIDAY or contact the Cornwall Holiday Inn at area code 613-933-8000.